accessible and affordable healthcare for all Filipinos. My name is Jerex Nika Montecalvo and I will be your MC for this afternoon. Okay, so I hope uh, everyone had a great lunch. I know that this part of the day is uh, a little, um, a bit, people tend to become sleepy during this time. So I would like to remind you, we have coffee at the back and uh, we also have candies available. Okay, so moving forward. Earlier, we heard about the roles of DOH and PhilHealth. Attorney Salex also discussed about the insights and implications of universal health care. Now, this seminar is focused on ensuring equitable, accessible, and affordable health care for all Filipinos. And we need to understand the standpoint of a physician on this matter. Of course, who else can explain it better than a physician himself, right? So our next speaker is a graduate of Western Visayas State University College of Medicine. He was the former rural health physician of Dingle Rural Health Unit and a former medical officer of Iloilo City Health Office. Our speaker was also a former medical officer three of the Department of Surgery of Western Visayas Medical Center as well as Angel Salazar Memorial General Hospital in Antique. He was also a former chief of hospital of Don Jose S. Monfort Medical Center in Barotac Nuevo. Presently, he is the medical center chief too of Western Visayas Medical Center. And of course, it is my privilege to present to you Dr. Joseph Dean L. Nicolo. Let's give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you for inviting me as one of your speakers for this topic, uh, ensuring equitable, accessible, and affordable healthcare. Anyway, paghatag uh, sang kan kain cindi tanan kara ya. Okay, okay. Why sang farinar ha? Okay, para magilin cindi ana kita tanan. So paghatag sang topic sa akong sa na explain the physician's standpoint in ensuring equitable, accessible, and affordable healthcare. Nanumdumi ko sa maayo kung paano ko himo ng ako ng slides. Okay? Kailan tawon mo sa subong kung nakabasa ka mo sa IRR sa UHC daw ara naman tanan din mention. Ang ako lang himo on is that from reality right now what is happening right now based on my experience for how many years in government service to universal health care. Okay? How para natin maatay natin na ang enduring, equitable, accessible, and affordable health. Okay. So this is the objective of my topic. But before that, we should always put in mind, no, the question is steps in attaining the objective. Paano natin ma-reach in ang objective as physician or as healthcare workers? Another thing is, uh, what are the challenges to attain this objective? And the third is, What are the indicators or measures that we have reached the objective? Paano nato mabalan nga nagsuccessful ang UHC? Kaysa plano plangadaan, it would take 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Probably most of you are retired na. Once fully implemented ang universal healthcare. If you can remember, universal healthcare nag-start ni 1948 pa supposed to be. Pag-declare sa WHO nga ang health is like a basic necessity sa tao. Ano nga isang elementary pa lang kita? Food, shelter, clothing. Then, gini-include ang health. That's why, kita sa Philippines, subong lang kita yung nag-implement. <laughs> Iba niya country siya ga-implement na. Okay? So, based sa ako ng topic, i-correlate ko what is happening right now pakanto sa universal healthcare. Ang role natin as healthcare workers, as physicians. Okay? So, kwanta naman o, sa February 2019, ito naman ni President Duterte ang Universal Health Care Act, no? Then, Declaration of Principles, I know, tag isa-isa na nagina, but gusto ko lang i-emphasize ang certain points. Integrated and comprehensive approach to ensure health literacy. As healthcare workers, kung doktor ako, paano ko mabalaan? Paano ko ma-implement sini ang Declaration of Principles nga ginabutang sa IRR? Health literacy. Kita nga mga healthcare workers sometimes, 
especially ako doktor, maneglect tagit ang pag-explain sang masakit sa pasyente. Pambala nga, mga keyboard lang akong gisas lang. Dok, nga operahan ako. How? Ay, why gila na-explain siya mo nga operahan ka? Ano gila ba masakit na ako? No? So, dapat, ang inahambawin na sa mga residente sa medical center is that i-explain nyo git sa pasyente ang masakit. Kaya kasugod sa aton ang explanation sa doktor, sa nurses, para mabalaan nila kung ano nila masakit. Maintindihan nila. Ang, ang iba nang kisang makot, abutan na, sana abal doktor nga operahan lang. No? Hindi po piralak. Huwag ka balo. Okay? Healthy living, protection from hazards and risk. Amo na ang mga declaration of principles. Next, healthcare model that provides comprehensive health services without causing financial hardships. Uh, kung mong i-google nyo na, there are different models sa uh, universal healthcare. Ang aton isubong ina-implement is that ang gobyerno mabayad through PhilHealth. Okay? Uh, that's why ang kwarta sa gobyerno is ang Syntax, PAGCOR, PCSO, all of the rest sina. Mahingi mo na siya ang fund para sa aton ng mga lubos or maimol or indigent ng patients. Okay? Ang hindi makasarang. Para without causing financial hardship. I know every one of you may aray ka mo parinti ng hospital. Kag nakita niyo kung kano ka, bisan madawa-dawa pa pang abuhi natin, nakita niyo kung ano kabudlay kung may mga hospital. Okay? Especially kung huwag ka back-up na, back na funds. Kahulat ka pa sa finance from abroad. Bisan bantay lang ganit sa hospital kaya tinudlan na pa. May bala? May ara ako na ng bala niya. Gusto yung gabilan sa mabantay. Ba mo gabi ka lang mabantay? Biya ko kaya adlaw, damo risita, damo balaklon ko. Kung gabi ito, log pa sinti huwag gawa risita. Okay? Hall of system, hall of government, hall of society approach in the development of health policies. Kanami, no? Pamatian. Ang problema, primis aton, kanami isang layita, but ang implementation, ang budlay. People-oriented approach centered on people's needs and well-being. Okay. Next is general objectives progressively realized. No? So, word. Hindi pa lang sa objective, progressively realized. That means Sige, sige pa eh. Amat-amat pa. Through systemic approach and clear role delineation of stakeholders. Who are the st stakeholders natin? Kita eh. You know? Healthcare workers, all the allied uh, workers sa health. To ensure equitable, arending topic, no? Equitable. Mga mga equitable gani. Equal access to quality, affordable healthcare protection against financial risk. Lantawan ninyo sa mga mission-vision sa mga Different hospitals, ara ginapemi, equitable, affordable, compassionate, ta 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 and everything. No, ara na mga mission vision na that. Universal Health Care Act, usually population coverage, di sila tanan ng Pilipino. No, no matter what is your age, tapat dapat cover na siya sa akwan universal health care. Kag tanan ng serbisyo, no, except what. Ano lang ang services kundi covered sa universal healthcare? Tataas ilong, padako boobs, padako buli, in a minute. Cosmetic. Ita mo taga pill health, kasabat ka doon. No, hindi na pwede ang pagwapa, in a minute. Okay. Financial coverage, ang gusto na di is that nising ko dapat wais ang gastoon ang pasyente, especially ang ato mga indigent patients. Okay. So, sa 2017, no, again, create in a time ni Secretary of Health, National Objective for Health. This is the Philippine Health Agenda. Forward. Cannot. Forward, please. Ato. Okay. So this is a medium-term roadmap of the Philippines towards achieving universal health care. If you can remember, time pa ni President Pinoy, kalusugan pang kalata na, which is universal health care na na. Gamat na ba nato? Okay? Subong lagi na-realize kag napirmahan nga Republic Act lagi siya. So, there are three major goals of Philippine Health Agenda. Better health outcome. Diraman na lagi pattern. Financial risk protection. Kag responsive health system sa which makes Filipino feel respected, valued, and empowered. Okay? Now, sa Department of Health, ever since pag-start ko work sa Department of Health, ari gini siya pirmi nga kwan. Nga picture makita mo niya ang pa ang four pillars sa Department of Health para matain ang vision and mission, no? 
isang Department of Health, uh, Filipinos will have uh, health na ultimate 2020, 2020 and uh, up to 2040, no? So these are the different uh, pillars, finance, service delivery, regulation, governance, and of these pillars, ang iya nga base is the performance accountability. Ang performance accountability is that, amon na siya, ang mga ISO, PGS, doon mo na siya counter-check sa four pillars para mag-successful ang apat ka pillars. So in every pillar, ara na da ang equity, affordability, tanan. Okay? So we will discuss it one by one. Don't worry. Uh, Kuala ni. Dasig lang ni slides ko. 30 minutes tapos na ko. Financing. Secure sustainable investment to improve health outcomes and ensure efficient and equitable use of health resources. So example ko na diri. When we define efficient, capable of producing desired results without wasting materials, time or, or energy. Kung mangita ka empleyado sa imong uh, kumpanya or sa balay man ninyo, Kapag itakit siyang efficient worker. No? Ang hindi magasto, kabalob lang may idea, may diskarte sa ubrahan ay. No? So, sa efficiency sa aton sa service naman niya, para yung example ko natin is that, para hindi ma-waste ang resources ng government, in one of the meetings, sa uh, national staff meeting namon, ang isa ka chief of hospital nagtintog from North Northern Zone. I want my hospital to have a CT scan. Pinamangkot sa USEC. Pila ka bed ang imo CT uh, hospital? Ten bed. So, pina, pinamayaan siya, ngayon nga balas ang music. Okay, explain why, justify nga akin ang land mo. Kaya, kaya ina provi, uh, provincial hospital ko, no, 50 kilometers away pa. So, kung may mga kinanglang city scan, lalo pa dito, balik naman, gusto mo city scan. Okay, gusto mo city scan, may tao ka ma... Tao? Wala. May lugar ka? Wala. Anong imo power requirement? Wala. <laughs> so, paano ka matagahan city scan? Kaya dapat, kumplito ka antes ka ang mga ayos ang equipment niya ina. No? So, useless ka ang CT scan dito. Okay? Then, re uh, request necessary procedures only. Are, based on experience ko sa medical center nga, dira ko higit ka kalalalbo naman. Pag-abot ko na, da, may ara kami to the echo. Bago, bago. Okay. Tanan nga residente ka ron, antes mag-wapasinti, hapit sa to the echo. Tiga, ala ko na nga, nga permi puno ang ward. Tiga, spot check ko na. Ano na siya nga, web sa kapuli? Dok, go, let's schedule to the echo. Manong puli, natin yung schedule to the echo, two weeks pa. So, sagot doon, tanong pasinti for two weeks hospital. So, pinatawa ko naman ang chairman, sang medicine. Ang mga residente, mong gina-check mo man, nga pinagusto sila, request to the echo. Lalo, tawag ko lang, dok, tisubong nag-minimize. Why na sa to the echo, to the echo. Karon, umabot ang mammogram. Surgery na naman. Tanan naman nga may gagmay pa titi, may mga bukol-bukol, shh, mamogram naman. Bako, hindi na ako mga bakal equipment mag na. Mamunobla kay using tani sa inang mga resource para sa insakto lang gate. Hindi nga ginahimon yung dose screening. Okay. Pag-install sa MRI naman, himuha ko na guideline. Nagay ka mo sa agad, request ka mo sa MRI. Di, tanan nga MRI request, it should be countersigned by the consultant. Kaya mga residente, kung ano mabasa nila sa libro, MRI di yun ah, CT scan di yun. Kato ko mo sa medical center, wala pa CT scan ka to, kaya yung ano sa buong November, probably schedule mo February pa. Okay. So, muna sa kadamo. Ano, hindi na sa agad refer to. Okay? Next, equitable. Dealing fairly, equally with everyone to address a just social and economic arrangement. Ari Pagit, kung kamu nga mga doktor, may doktor, may doktor this time ni doktor ni mo. Kung kamu mga doktor man, oh, usually nasumpaan na mo nga we will take good care of our patients. No? Equitably, tagaan siyang insakto nga uh, treatment siya and everything. Sa diri naman niya, pagpungko ko sa medical center, nakikaraan siya ko sa kitchen. Kita ko ginaseperate nila yung pinggan. Ang isa ka pinggan dito may apple. Ang isa waay. Uh, for dish out na nila pa sa pasyente. Bakong nga waay niya apple, ha? Pero para na sa mga NBB. Tingnan may apple niya. Yan sa patient. So, anong equality dira? No? Mas kinang lang ito sa nutrition, sa NBB, nga emol to. Mas namian, mas namian man sa sang apple. Kao yun man na siya. No? Ari ang manggaranon nga pay, pay, pay na siya gani. Maka ba 
akal lah sesama saya rasa saya kuat. Mana bela? So what is equity? Tidak sepekaon pula. Okay. Sapi tak pangku medicine, although nak nukis aku ni sekarang farmasis kaki konsensi aku no. Kadu sopsi nak dok kita konsensi aku mungkin aku. Mereka dok tanahnya in BB patients tak bela. Hari tengah pilihan basi viral. Antara yang NB, B patients, tiba lah. Ang inatag namun ng bulong, generic. Tapos kung mga B patients, dok ang branded. Mayad na bala. Pati lawaman ang B, ang mga e-mols ang inatawa ng branded ng medicines. Kaya, why mang kukuhan sa mga generic? Pero, I don't know, may mga experience. Kamu may mga experience mo sa mga generic. May arang iman yung mga house show. So, Ever since ako na siya, pag-bid na na kung ano ang inahatay natin sa pay patient, ang mga muna dapat sa service cases. Para equity, equal na na siya. Hindi ka alam mo na karoon nga. Nga, why ka? Ayaw pa siya. Hindi mo tugad-duga na ito. Ay gali, probably hindi effective ang bulong. I don't know. I cannot comment regarding that. Okay? Next. Equity. So, sa Section 29 sa IRR, Preferential Licensing Health Services, of health facilities, contracting of health services for underserved areas. So, kung sa mga underserved areas, pareho, if you notice, ang Philippines is made of islands. May mga island barangays kaya hindi naging ma-rich, no? So, ang pinakalapit ang bid dito nga barangay, nga island, pagkabot siya sa isa ka-town, o ay isang hospital, pero may arang nga private clinic or private laboratory. Pwede na i-hire niya sa government, ang laboratory ka, ang clinic, to serve the indigent, no? By the lang lang galing sila. So, ang contracting nila sa mga underserved areas. Next, equitable distribution of health services and benefits prioritizing the GIDA areas or geographically isolated disadvantaged areas. But, ang tanam na kung sa dito mga GIDA areas, no? Tawi-tawi, no? Tot-tot-tot. So, mga bukit-bukit dito. Budlay, kitlabotun. Mga taglaw, kaadlaw, palaktun mo. Tapos, makalabot sa ilang barangay. Okay? I know, may harap mga mga doctors to the barrios, may harap makita nurses nga nag-serve sa far-flung areas. Okay. So, equitable distribution lang, no? And all government hospitals, are eh, implement kini hasta subong, no? 90% kung amo ng hospital sa medical center is 425, dapat 10% lang na ang private. As of the moment, gani, hindi na 42, kundi 20 na lang amo private rooms because gabakbaka na ay kami, kulang kami ward ang semi-private ward naman, yun himo naman service ward, okay? So, kung sa mga specialty hospitals, just like heart center, lung center, 70-30 sila, and private hospitals, uh, na, uh, 10% of it should be service case. Sp uh, service delivery, ensure the accessi accessibility, essential quality health service at appropriate level of care. So, kung accessibility, that means availability. No? Capable of being rich. Uh, two or three years ago, kabalo ko may isang... Tani, why didn't the district hospital ngayon na? Hindi ko lang pag-mention na. May isang district hospital nga pag 5 o'clock, why na sila pharmacy, why sila radiology, why sila laboratory. Na? So, kakadto na sa una sa amon sa Monfort, dito mapa x-ray, dito mapa laboratory, dito mapa makalbolong, kayo mas lapit mo. Uh, why ko may ginamal nga district, ha? So... Kaya tungod, isa lang ila medtech, isa lang rin ila radtech at that time. Siguro sa mong okay na kayo daw dama, pero that was three or four years ago. Okay man sa mong kayo, gain income kami. So, supposed to be, dapat 24-7 ang mga district hospitals natin, operational, para mag-sensible na karoon kung balik ka lang buwas, aga kayo buwas pang radiologist namun, buwas ka lang pa urinalysis, kayo buwas pang medtech namun. It should be dapat 24-7. Okay? So, ang question sinada, ang Baragay Health Centers, RHUs, maka 24-7? Birthing Centers, yes, 24-7. Pero mga MH, mga RHUs, why no? 7-11 na lang. Level of care, balaan man natin, primary, secondary, tertiary care, as pangkot ganing ina si ma'am, is that ang um, all the district hospital situation tara sa Iloilo province all the district hospitals in Iloilo are level 1 no sa so, unang dobate kuno do level 2 ang province pero do na downgrade sila di ba so mga level 1 care mga bang na level 1 care ano lang na supposed to be dapat ng kaso hmm. lupot ubo hilan nat mo amo lang na tani all of the rest haboy sa medical center and that 
So, primary secondary tertiary care sa, sa UHC na ni, may navigation na na. Uh, so, hindi kakakadto sa, sa medical center, sa tertiary hospital, kung hindi kakahapit sa primary. Diri na nga damo na mabumbo namon kag action radio, kag reklamo, it, 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 Kaya mang hindi kami sa pasyente kung huwag nakahapit sa primary care. Okay? Kaya supposed to be as, as tertiary hospital, balaanin ni Ma'am Tiny, hindi na tanay kami magbaton sa NSVD. Dapat ara na sa mga district hospitals, barangay administration, dapat sa mga kwan, no? Galing, nakita ko man, statistics will show sa amon, 60 to 70% of our patients is coming from Iloilo City. Hindi sa province. The problem is that Iloilo City why sang city hospital. So, kami sa Binito ang halabuyan. The problem man sa Binito is that mapuno ilakatri, di sila magbaton. <laughs> no? Oh, mo okay, daw, nag-agree si ma'am. So, dito sa amo kay no refusal policy. So, ano na sa Proper uh, distribution of patients na. Okay. Next, regulation, ensure high quality and affordable health products, devices, facilities, and services. High quality, high level of value or, or excellence. Price versus quality. May very good example ko na di. When I was in Monfort, ang amon ko, wa, although may go, kung makilala na yung makamay o what, pero may just strict to. Gabakal kami sa una bulong directly sa medical center. Government to government, masapos, wala kami papilis. Pero kinabalong isang ko, wa, nga. Bid ka ba para magnubo pang bulong? Kaya sa medical center, ang mga bulong nila to ay may consignment sila mo sa mga branded, mas uh, prefer naman. Bako sir, basi mag-bid kami, kag-generic, mas sinulod. That is the proper way, dapat mag-bid ka mo, karoon na tabuan. Bata yan, ours naman. Gintay po ito. Kaya na gusto mo sir, generic o kong branded? Hindi ako branded eh. Oo. Branded eh, nga si Frexo. Gusto mo sabi, may generic kami din, nga si Frexo. Ito mga lang gali. So, price versus quality. So, kita ya, uh, quality kita. Ang price, um, we will see. Next, ang gusto tapag hindi paabot is that kung high quality dapat, ang mga e-mall man nato, makakita man sa spesyalista. No? Subong may spesyalista sa kurason, sa baga, mga muna bala, sa tanan. May ara pag ito, subspecialist pag ito. No? So, dapat uh, muna sa Monforce na nga yung tinguhaan ko ginada nga mahata, ma departmentalize para tanahan nga pumuluyo, makatilaw o makita man sa ginatawag na espesyalista. Okay. Affordable. Having a cost that is not too high. Efficacy of drugs. Question naman naman na. No? Efficacy of drugs and diagnostic procedures. Affordable, yes. Pag-implement sa universal healthcare, dapat control na ng prices. Sa subo man gani, may DPRI kita nga ginafollow, hindi maglapaw ang bulong dira dapat. The problem is that kung may mga bago nga bulong, nga mga doktor, agresibo, why pa sa PNDF, prescribe sila nga PS prescribe. So, patay naman kami sa NBB sa PhilHealth. No, wala siya. So, dapat mapili kita sa drugs. Kaya may aram sa mga substitution mo. So, kung affordable lang gid, Once implemented an UHC, I think, te, why man may mabakal, why man sang kwarta nga pag-uawon ang pasyente. Diagnostic procedures, yes, I know. Mahal-mahal, uh, no? Uh, luckily, subong te, uh, sa medical center, may aray na kami nga uh, uh, cath lab. We can do angioplasty, hindi na sa una medical city lang na mo, which is uh, medyo mahal-mahal. And uh, luckily, Uh, October 16, ako nakapagiging pasyente na angioplasty ako dala sa <laughs> sa cut lab. Okay? So, I was the second patient. Bakit istingan tagi din cut lab ng isang <laughs> medical center? Okay man, buhi man ko. <laughs> Affordability. Procure drugs and devices guided by price reference indices. No? I-control ng price. Creation of price negotiation board. So, sila din makontrol. Composed of DOH, PA, PhilHealth, and DTI. Why na pinagustuhan na isang presyo sa mga uh, equipments, no? Readily accessible to the public, all pertinence relevant, up-to-date information regarding the price of health services. And generic equivalent of all drugs in the primary care formulary. Okay. And 
DOH field health and HMO shall develop standard policies to ensure that no benefit shall be unnecessarily done. Do you know that mga HMOs, sino sinyo may HMOs? No? Uh, you know, no brana nila, kung ma-admit ka, ubuso na na field health ni mo, ang excess ila na lang. Kung may excess pa sa ila na da, imo na na bulsa. Okay? So, ang problema mo na da, kung mga long-staying pasyente ni mo sa hospital, gadalom-gadalom imo bulsa. Eh, may limitation yung HMO. Okay. So, what are the steps in attaining the objective? No? Inclusion of UHC in the uh, curriculum. Sa section 25 sa IRR, naka-mention dito nga, allied healthcare workers dapat i-incorporate na sa curriculum. No? Just like sa College of Medicine siguro, isulod na na ang UHC para pag-practice na ni mo as doctor, mabalaan na ni mo may background ka na sa universal healthcare. Return Service Agreement and Deployment Program, which was mentioned in Section 26 and 24. Return Service Agreement, kung yung government scholar ikaw, uh, mabalik mo na service uh, three years, which will be assigned ka sa mga underserved or unserved ng areas. And Deployment Program, ang munisubong uh, one of the projects of the Department of Health, ay may kung uh, residency training ka, uh, kung five years para surgery, five years, ang ika six years ni mo, i-deploy ka na. I-deploy ka na sa, uh, subong ka-deploy kami residence sa uh, Rojas, ka Mambusaw, IM nga residence. Okay? So, one year na dito sila to help. Ang ilan to idea is that kay kinakulang ang mga doktor sa rural areas, ari na sa urban. Panundo ba bala? Uh, Ilu-ilo city lang ha. There are already three college of medicine. Kung 50 lang kada graduate, every year, 50 lang bin minimum ng graduate no? Kaglang doktor, there are already 150 uh, doctors sa Iluilo every year. Di nis lang akad to. Nga away sa kami sang residence sa Pedya. Nga away kami residence sa OB. Nga kulang residence naman surgery. Di nis lang akalalad to. Any answer? Di nis lang akalalad to na? No? <laughs> Nag-eskwila nursing. <laughs> nagpa, nagpa Amerika. Okay? Iba na ga. Sila ka tipo na sila sa urban areas kanto sa Manila or I don't know. Uh, greener pastures. Okay? So, ara ng deployment program. Ang isa pa yung purpose ng deployment program is that kung ma-deploy na mo ng doktor sa rural areas, kung lalaki o kung babae man to siya, Kinapang mo yun naman makakita sa isang pamanahon o pangasawahon para dito na sa mag-practice. Hindi siya magbalik sa siyudad. And may natabog yung mana. Last year, may gin-deploy kami sa Rojas uh, surgery. No? Uh, binayaan niya din ang biyoya. Makita siya ng biyoya sa Rojas. So, mag-graduate siya siguro dito na siya. One of the strategy. <laughs> Equal distribution of human resource for health. So, I know may mga NDPs din, no? Amo na siya, kinapangdagdag mo sa mga uh, rural health unit para to augment ang workforce dito. Pang-immunize, tanan. Okay? Extra benefits for healthcare workers assigned in GIDA. Siyempre, kung ikaw man to sa kwanon, uh, siguro may arak man nga with pay, three months with pay, free emo ticket, uh, ano ba? May tour package ka man every year or what. Upgrade district hospitals and provincial hospitals. One of our meetings, are di taga district hospitals, no? One of our meetings with the HMO, with the attorney Nang, is that ang plan with also with the director Convocar is that i-develop, ginanaghabala si Tiny, i-develop ang major district hospitals. So every district, i-develop ang isa. Nga hindi pag tanan sa medical center. Just like kung sa... Kuan ang gimbal develop Aliosan, Pototan, and Kabatuan. Ano pang isa tong i-develop? Basta daw lima. Sara? I don't know kung anong Sara. Basta i-develop na sila nga mga hospitals para dito na tanan ma uh, ma-screen antes magkato sa medical center. Para ang makato na sa medical center is that pang tertiary case. Ang ang focus subong sa medical center will be a multi-specialty center na kami. Subong gina-develop lang namo ng heart, then lang, kidney, managtapos ng building namo sa kidney. So, mas specialty na lang kami. Although may arang general, pero we, what we are planning is that 
uh, mga specialty hospitals kami. Okay? So hopefully, ma-upgrade atong mga district hospitals and provincial hospitals. Next, appropriate allocations of logistics and finance equally. Don't you know, nag-girinilamo kami sa National Staff Meeting sang last August. Kaya nakita na mo ng budget for 2020, ang ako, no, sa Medical Center, MOE ko, 85 million, nag-increase lang around 97 million. But, ang mga gagbay ng hospital sa Mindanao, 25 bed, 50 bed, 160 million ang budget. Bako, kinabala kong chief, kung amon ang budget mo sa MOE, pa-cater ka adlaw-adlaw sa pagkaon para sa pasyente ni mo. No? Kaya paano mo dumabala? 25 bed ka lang, 160 million. Ako, yeah, 425. Ikala po, galapot kami 795 million lang. So, unequal distribution. Therefore, nagwangalgit kami ang mga dalagong hospitals. Nga, muna, how did you compute? I-recompute na nila. Pero hindi na dapat ba recompute? Kaya nag-GAA yan, na nagwa na. So, sa 2021 naman, may kaliwa, ka, na na nami-nami. Just for 2019, anong equity sinadira? How can we give, ensure equity? Okay. Medical Center, ang budget ko for <laughs> HFEB or capital outlay, 2.5 million lang. Husto ko lang ibakal sa EEG machine. No? Supposed to be, taga kami budget about, nangayo ko 185 to upgrade mga equipment na mo na meeting. Kaya tagsin mo 2.5 million. So, paano mo na may go? No? So, next year, I don't know, pero nga bati-bati ko, nandako budget ko, pero te, we will see. Unless ara nakita ko ang kwarta. Next, proper zoning of health facilities. May ara subong if you can notice. Then mas damo, government hospital or private hospital? Private, private hospitals. Pero damo na subong Florence, taga St. Paul's dire. I don't know if this is good news. Uh, Chakto ni news. May floor sa St. Paul's game close. Tungod why the nurses? Medicos? Kono? May mga wards sila kipang close? Bala nyo, di na kalato mga nurses? So, Western. <laughs> Ay, nag-increase ang salary namun because of the uh, executive order kag sa kwantos ang uh, joint uh, guideline na dapat ma-increase. Ang job hire na mo, kung job hire ka lang, ang grade mo dapat daw, ang uh, salary grade mo dapat daw nars. One thing, nars man namun 20. So, kung job hire ka, starting mo idiot 20. Namun na siya, under 40, pila ang St. Paul subong, pila ang mga private. 8? Ha? 8 to 10. So, pilo. So, hindi sila nagkalalad to. <laughs> Ato sa amun sa Western. Okay? Next, uh, proper zoning of health facilities. So, dapat i-well distributed. Uh, Pariyo, subong mas mayos mo kayo nakita ko sa Pasig, kapatid daw na to private hospital sa government, uh, sa Gimaras, may private hospital naman dito para ma-control bala. No? Although, dapat i-develop ito ang government hospital. Next, ang isa pag ginang I don't know how feasible mabalik kita sa centralization that all government hospital will be under DOH, hindi na under sa LGU. Possibility para may control ang Department of Health tanan sa LGUs. Next, what are the challenges in implementing this what we call universal healthcare and how can we attain, ensure Equitable, accessible, and affordable healthcare for all Filipinos. Challenges, priority of healthcare workers. Kita, doctor, nurses, anong atong priority? Do, really, do you, we really want to serve our country? Or do we really want to serve other countries to earn green monies? Huh? So priority, kung din ginangi mo gusto. Okay? Ako, pag uh, interview sa akong sa College of Medicine, nga nag doktor ka, to serve humankind. Yan. Bato ni. Discarte. Priority of local chief executives, LCEs, no? Kung lain naman karo pag-eleksyon, lain naman ang mayor, lain naman ang priority, although tigini mo na nila yi, dapat i-implement. Kaling kisa ang priority. Okay? Basi ka rin yung priority sa mayor ngayon eh, or gobernong ngayon eh, hindi ya health, gusto ya education, or what that. So, Mawigit na naman ang universal healthcare. And change of leadership. Tap. Kung hindi na si Digong Bisubong, lay na naman. Lay na naman ng kwan. No? Political na naman. Na. Next is budget. Of course, amon nga naglingin ang ulo namon kay masugod ng universal healthcare, 
2020, gin cut pa budget sa DOH. Ano na, dapat supposed to begin tugangan na na budget namin in preparation for para kami may improve na naman facilities naman and everything. Ang ginimok, gin cut pa. So, how can we implement that? So, the monitoring sa so Section 32 and evaluations ang implementation of universal health care. So, the PSA conduct household survey of implementation for the first 10 years. No? Kung effective, mang interview na sila siguro sa mga pasyente or what, then DOA shall publish annual provincial burden of disease using actual public and private data and disease registries. Kung nag-improve kin man, kung nag- uh, Nubo ang TB, nagnubo ang pneumonia, hypertensive, or non-com disease, non-communicable diseases, nagnubo yun man. And, decrease or no out-of-pocket expenditures. Siyempre yung mga interviews lang. Uh, may mga field health cares kita din, no? Um, ano ginambal nga naman, kontinuyan sa pasyente? May ginbakal ka? Oo. Oh, oh. Ano binakal mo ulit? Sudan yan, binakal yan to. <laughs> okay. Reach the target of uh, um, millennial development goal and your sustainable development goal. Okay? Probably, ang muna mahamahal na natin, kung retired na kita, na-reach gitman na successful ang universal health care. Uh, next. Oh. Next slide. Okay. In summary na lang eh. Dasing lang. Clarify the roles. DOH and LGU for population-based services and field health for individual-based services. Pooling of funds, I have said, may kwarta, nga pakuaan, syntax, pag-core pag MPCSO. And two types of membership, direct and indirect, na discuss na siguro sa field health. Contracting, ang mga ito contracting, no? kung why available sa isa ka area, pwede private laboratories or clinics, i-contract or i-hire sa government. Service delivery, no, arat na kayo state institutionalizing primary care as a prerequisite to access higher level of care and contracting by network. So, hindi ka nakasaka sa medical center kung hindi ka mag sa uh, primary care. Consolidating fragmented providers into province-wide, city-wide, service delivery network. So, ang province may ara sila sa SDN, ang city may SDN, masang iya. And enabling income retention for all public providers through special health fund, yak field health funds, and sa regulation, mandating transparent pricing of health goods and services. Uh, more daw may control na sa mga prices and drugs and uh, equipment. Uh, basic and non-basic accommodation na mention naman. Ensure benefit complementation of field health and private sa HMOs. No? Expanding scholarship, amuna na ba mga return of service. No? And national health work. So may aral na sa surveys kung pila ang nurses dirang area, pila ang doktor dirang area. Okay. Health registry. So the big question. Before I end, the big question mark is that, are we ready? Are you? Are we ready as healthcare workers? I know there are many challenges. Damo pa ni labor pains. Damo pa ni mag-implement. Damo pa ni nawa. Damo pa ni binaisay. Uh, as far as uh, I remember, pagwa sang ayar, ar sang July, damo na ganin nagreklamo. No? Ang mga private sector nagreklamo na dito, kay tungod kuno, why sila taga appeal health, tat, 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 tat. So, subong may, may finality na sa IRR. So, are we ready? To answer the question, I would like to take ang quotation, quote ni uh, Francisco Doque, our Secretary of Health. We have weathered the challenge of time. We survived the hard pressed necessity to adapt to rapidly changing health systems. We achieved much, but now is, is not the time to be comp complacent. Together, nothing is impossible. Together, we can deliver UHC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nicolo, for, that, uh, for clarifying the role of the physician in the implementation of the universal health care law. Now, we all know how important health is and being able to access appropriate healthcare services is twice as important. To share with us a real-life healthcare scenario, we have invited a client to share his lived experiences as a recipient of healthcare, as a recipient of healthcare services from the government. Please welcome Ms. Maribel Ligarde, 
to share with us her lived experiences. Let's give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, maayong hapon sa tanan. Ako gali si Maribel Garda, taga Kubay, Lambunao, Iloilo. Ang ishare ko sa bo, ang na-experience ko sa hospital, kag sa Vinipids ka, Fell Health. Bali, ang ano ko gali, ang manghod ko, kag ang tatay ko. So bali, ang ano namon, bali, do nagsabay-sabay sila, hospital. Ang una, manghod ko, bali, daw 11 days siya sa hospital. Tapos after that, ang tatay ko naman, bali daw 5 days pa lang siguro nakagwa manghod ko. Nagsunod si tatay ko, bali nabungguan siya daw, aksidente siya. Tapos mga 5 days man lang si tatay, sang na, ano, nagginbuligan man siya sang nakabunggo sa iya, pero ang sa hospital bill iya, bali kreditan ng sa Pell Health. Ang sa manghod ko naman, after nakagwa si tatay, daw ginerbyos siya bala. Kay daw pulmonary, ang iya sakit mo, daw ginahapo siya. So pagkatapos ang ano, sa pagwa ni tatay, after mga few days, ginadmit ko naman siya liwat. Pag-admit ko siya, siguro mga 11 days man siya sa hospital. Pero kay lain man nga diagnosis, so bali credit naman liwat sa pelhead. So daw, ano gawa, luwas gawa kami sa gastos. After naman, siguro nakagwa lang siya 2 days, ginbalik ko naman siya, kaya daw, ang buti na po naman siya liwat sa so, mga 17 days siya sa hospital. Pero daw, wala na to na credit ang ikatatlo yung ano, baligin ba yung namon to. So, balik after mga September, si tatay kung tinag-ayo na siya, nagalagaw na lagaw naman siya, nagapauma, Pagkatapos, nag, that time, isa ka adlaw, nagkato sa suma, naglagaw, nag-check sa mga tanomya or ano, kay mahilig siya mag-garden. Bali si tatay, gali, 77 years old na, pero active siya eh. Wala man siya ibang uh, nabatyag, uh, high blood, or mataas sugar, diabetes, wala man. Pero that time, siguro, sang pag-disgrass siya, yung ato, sa CT scan niya, okay man, daw wala man sang problema. Kay sa ulo, iya ka ito nga, ano mo, iya nga daw pilas. So, wala pa ba yan? Okay, lang hayang balsang doktor, ang, ang panilagan lang kung ano yan na batyagan niya. Okay man lang maglagaw or ano, basta hindi lang din magpainit siya daw. So, after three months, siguro, itong natabo, naglakat siya sa uma. Pagpuli iya, siguro mga one kilometer man halin sa uma sa sabalay. Naglingin o loya daw natumba siya. Siguro mga layo pa sa balay. Sa unhan pa lang sa umanabon. So bali may naghatod sa iya sa balay. So sang sa balay na siya, yung pamangkot ko kung ano matyag ya. Hambal ya, galingin lang ulo ya, abi. Ito yung pa-check up naman sa do private lang bala nga doktor. So ganarisitahan lang siya. Gin para sa lingin o loya, kaya wala magataas dugo iya. Do wala man sa sahay blood. Pero after few days, na-notice ko na daw lain. Nag-idya daw hindi niya mahulag. Ang sampiak niya nga lawas, ang right part niya. So daw Friday to mga September, ah, August 22 siguro, gindala ko siya sa district hospital namon. So bali, daw pilaman ka oras bago siya i-admit kay ginano pa siya. Ito gintawag niya, observahan pa siya. Ginano man tanan niya, gincheck, ECG, daw tanan-tanan. Pero na ano man nga daw wala man siya high blood. Kaso hindi lang ma ano mga kamot ya mahulag or mga tiil ya. So gin admit siya. No so, September uh, August 27, gin request siya ni Doc bali sa district hospital na mo nga ipasit scan siya. So disto na discover nga may ano sa subdural ano hematoma siya. So nag ano request na ni si doktor nga Pa-request siya, daroon siya sa, ano, sa, Christian. <laughs> okay, man. Pakundigolo mo kayo doon. So, daw, kaagahon, siguro, ah, mga 10, siguro kami naghalin sa Amon District Hospital, no? Pa-refer kami ni Doc Bellionweba, I think, sa, ano, Christian. Dito na kami. Ang sa Christian na kami, ha? Bo, ya, wag hulat sa emergency. Ti, ako lang. Tis, tatay, hindi pa kahulag. Ang ambulansya na mo, nagahulat. 
Bola stress na no ni wala pakay damo papasyente sa mon mo. Ko sige lang ana inong latlaton ta lang kay indi man si tatay ka pungko kay puno puno gid ya may na disgrasya pa that time so priority man ka doktor ang delikado gid bala. So lat lat lang kami. So mayo na lang kay may nag ano do may gindala na sa uh, sulod sa ward or sa operating room. Nagbakante ang isa ka ano te na sa ilo na kami pasalamat gid ko mga 3:30 siguro to sa aga. Pero sa kon lang pag ano mga attending doctors a ah, surgery na sa blast tatay mo ana ah, senyora do gin pakilala na amo na pero para sa akong experience mayo ang ano serbisyo sa neurosurgeon sa surgery nga part <laughs> ana ket si doc <laughs> pero doc ka ah, ang ano lang garing kay sempre ka sala sala man ang ibang nurse hindi taman maano di bala kay amo gid na normally sa ano sa public daw hindi gawa ano bala daw hindi gawa alert daw pero buyo mong kusta eh isa nga no bala <laughs> syempre to od man hindi ta na maalikawan syempre ako nakagi man ko private nakagi man ko public nga hospital na experience ko man na mo kay ako syempre nakabata ako sa private ko nagbata kay Amo na, pero ang sa public, do okay man po sa mga doktor, do believe gid ko sa doktor nga sa mga neurosurgeon, surgery ni doc. Pero sa mga nurse do, doc, konting ano pa doc? Konting imbo. <laughs> kay do ano pa hindi pa gid alert do medyo. Wala ko man kay do mga baguhanan, maguhanon pa man ang iba mo. Pero sa mga tigulang na do nami ila pag ano, attend sa inyo. Siguro ang mga ano lang mga baguhan, no lang nurse do medyo. Ano pa? Do konting push pa dok para nga do magnami ila ano sa patient. Do okay lang na wala man pili kung pigado ka balaw ano how pero importante nga maserbisyuhan yung pasyente nga sa maayo mo lang na, sa mga nurse ta no. Pero sa akon do wala man gid ko ano sang time nga ginoperahan to si tatay. Do kanami man lang do kabot-bot gid sang doktor ya ang um, bot lang kasi si doktor Bakalyan I think doc. Seven na do amo no sa no kabuot gid siya kag kadali do basta bata na sa ang bata ba do nga do gwapo hon nga doktor <laughs> bot lang wala ka basta neuro surgeon siya do kanami siya mag ano do kanami siya mag attend bala dok daw hindi ka kulbaan nga ko ano matabo sa pasyente mo kay nga explain niya sa akon sempre ako ang bata sa do ako tanan tanan naga ano bala dok nga explain niya kon paano ano ang do porsyento bala nga Success or failed, so ang balya do mga 85% or something. Love mga do successful. Gid la kay okay man sa tatay, normal blood pressure. Ano normal man blood pressure? Or yeah, kay wala man sa ano, wala man. Do wala man iba nga sakit. Bala kag do, amo lang na siya do, hindi lang siya kahula. Kag do medyo ano lang paghambal ya. So September 8, ginoperahan si tatay. Pero sa kaloy sang Ginoo after 18 hours nakagwa ni si tatay do kanami lang kay kibot ko kay kambal na siya kambal na gid alsa na iya kamot so it means nga successful gid ang operasyon ni tatay kag sa mga ward naman pag ano naman siya do every pila ka oras gina check man siya kang nurse kag ano ah do wala man problema sang after operation niya so sa mga bulong malang daw okay man do okay man mga bulong nga resita siya do Gambal mga nurse kung ano kung generic or ano ano tawag na kung oh, branded di ako ba okay lang kung ano branded mar ano kung ano lang available okay lang so after ano ginambalan yung kung um balik si ginasi dok daw pera ka dok si pera ka visit si dok mag visit kay tatay siguro three times nakita yung nga okay naman improvement ni tatay bala pag ano to si Ambal ya pwede na siya kagwa mga sa 30 siguro do September 14 Ambal ya panilagan talag gina pamangkot si tatay gina check kundi ang ulo ya do may ano siya dok no do na pam oo do do sa bado ya to ginkwa mo sang kagahon ti Ambal ya okay na pwede na kagwa so mga Sunday ni pa mga process pagka Monday gin process ko na siyempre operasyon bala no sa cranio to me dok Do kaya kulbaan naman siyempre sa ulo, operasyon, yung mo do, mahal-mahal, ginibaydan ko mo, do kulbaan, bala, luwas na ginapagwa, mga pamakal, sagwa. Pero sa ulod-sulod, sa ulod sa hospital, ya, wala, hindi ang mga gamit lang, daya, pero ano lang, ya, do, wala na, ya, ah. 
mga personal ba lang kinangla ni mga nga ang mga bulong niya kag ano dextrose na nan tanan niya sa ano nang naya ospital na naya wala na ko yung bulong wala na ko yung bakas sa gwa at nan tanan niya dira na sulod ya bale ang obra ko ya makwa lang ko ya resita kag magpila to sa gwa adila lang ko kalulo ay pila to sa gwa bala kay damatambo kaya ka pila Hindi ako ginawok. Isa kay madalaga naman ko to. Kaya siyempre, hindi ko mapwede pabayaan si tatay. Kaya ako lang isa gamantay. Halin pag sulod niya kapag paopera, ya ako lang tanan. So, dawa lagi ko iba nga sa ligan. Kung hindi ko galingon ko. Di matinder. Baka matcheck pa ko siya. Kaya karoon ko mangihi. Ito kaya hindi lang siya magdayaper. Kaya gusto niya matindog mangihi. Kaya kalakat na sa kuno. Di hindi siya pwede nga bayaan. Ano, di mapila pa ko to iba. Lawig-lawig. Patag amo-amo pa ng pila nila to. Tiga mo na nga, naiin ko ba kamudlay, gagalik kong ano, kao kong sa public, pero sa pa ano lang, okay lang kayo daw makales kagiri mo sa ano, sa balayranan. So kanto na ta sa balayranan, no, nagpa ano na ko, <laughs> sa biling na ko, kulbaan ko, eh ba, pero kamilmil gawa pagpabiling, kulbaan ko, ano, kung ni man. Pero sa tatay kay senior, kag may pill health siya, in bibi mo, Magkatan ako ba? Ang kudakudako man galibuhin sa pelhead na nalipay ko eh. Siyempre nahawasan ko nga. Siyempre ako lang, iba ko nga uto daw wala man gidbil no. Daw wala man sila mabuligid nga dako sa akon. Bangkol ba? Pagkita ko sa balay dan, pagprasis ko buhin sa pelhead. Ba na matumbo-tumbo ko sa kalipay? Kaya ka dako sa buhin, almost 70% or na dyan, deragid sa tapos sa ano yaman. Sama plus sa uh, iyang uh, senior, almost 90%. Gid. Tapos siyempre, may ara pa na kita nga na na. Swa? Swa na dok na? So, almost ba? O kalipay ko ako. Kaya dako, gidako niya na sebya. So, sa pelhel, dako, gidya pa salamat ko. Kaya amo na nga daw, kadako, gidya na save ko nga to. Kumpara man sa manghod ko, amo man, dako man na save ko sa iya tungod sa pelhel. No, halos wala, gid ko ko natamaan nga balayran. So, subong daw, kung maminsan ko nga po hospital, ko okay lang gali, basta may pill health. Right, eh, gid ko yaman po hospital all that time, basta magbatyag ko yung masakit. Wala, hindi, gid ko yung kulbaan, wag po hospital, subong. Basta may pill health na ko, ah, sige, go, go, go lang mo po hospital. So, gali, sa tandaan gali, dapat sa nakabati, bisan professional ka, may kwarta ko, o wala. Importante, hindi nga may ara, kita pill health. At least, di ba, mabuhinan atong galastohon. Misan to, may ubra ka, may kwarta ka. O, siyempre, kanugon, mga kwarta mo, tanan ni gastos mo lang kung magmasakit ka, di ba, Las? Ano sinyo to, o, hindi? <laughs> eh, di, amo gina, amo gina, ang pinaka-importante sa atong subong, ang pill health. So, kung wala ka mo pill health, kinu lang lang, ano gina mo nga magka-pill health ka mo? Amo gina, ang na-experience ko sa pill health. So, Daw, so, amok it nang daw na ano ko nga sobra gid ako nalipay nga sa natabo to kay tatay nga dako balayra namon daw dako gid ya na ano ko sa pill health na bulig sa akon kumbaga daw siya gid nagluwas sa akon sa balayra nga dako amo lang gid na madamo gid salamat Thank you so much, Ms. Maribel, for that, uh, for sharing your experience with us. So we have heard about the stand of the physician and the experience of a client as recipient of care. Now, I know you have been looking forward to hearing about the nurse's role. As nurses, I know we are very much aware of our roles. But as you know, nurses assume a lot of roles, especially in healthcare. So to give us a clear understanding of the nurse's role in ensuring equitable, accessible, and affordable health care, or affordable health care for all Filipinos, it is my honor to introduce to you our next speaker. Our next speaker is a graduate of West Visaya State University College of Nursing. She took her Master's of Arts in Nursing, major in Community Health Nursing in Central Philippine University. She was a former staff nurse in Iloilo Mission Hospital, and a former nurse supervisor at Prince Mansur Military Hospital, Taif, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Currently, she is the Director of Nursing at Metro Iloilo Hospital and Medical Center Incorporated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mrs. Carolyn L. Yoro. Let us give her a round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. 
It's nice to be back to the school where I stayed for more than half of my life. I've been here as a clinical instructor for 29 years here at Central Philippine University. So although I am a graduate of West Visayas State University, but I learned a lot and I gained my professional experience here at Central. Okay, so, well anyway, thank you all for, also for my former students who invited me. Sinko nga ako, Gid. This is actually, uh, it, it is both the public and the private role of the nurses. In general, nurses lang. So don't think that because I am in a private, I'm going to give you a situation sa private. Although, mahambal gid ako kay ma'am. Ma'am, sino ganit first name niya? Lusarla. Lusarla. Ma'am, Lu ah, Sarla. Ma'am, Sarla, so meaning to say, kung grabe ang imo pila dito sa Western Visayas Medical Center. Ang atong bala na nag-experience? Ah, si Ma'am Maribel gali. Ma'am Maribel, kung grabe ang imo pila dito sa Western Visayas Medical Center, but of course, in a private hospital, that would not happen because right now, especially at Metro Iloilo Hospital, this is only the first hospital in Iloilo that we have what we call the pneumatic tube. Okay, I have here my staff nurses with me. So, when we say pneumatic tube, the, um, all the medicines that you requested for will just only go to you. No need for the nurses or even the folks will go down to get those medicines. So that's it. That's one uh, feature that I'm going to tell you. Okay, let's proceed now on our topic. Nurses, I want to emphasize with you your role in improving health. Isn't it this topic to ensure the equitable or equity, to ensure the kind of care that you give, that's what we call the quality care, and to ensure accessibility and affordability of care, we are nurses don't judge those things, right? Rich or poor, what kind of social or economic status the patient has, we care for those patients. Correct? Nga kung magabot ng pasyente, ginatulok mo, babaw dalom, ay, amuni ang mga aton nga components of care, makabayad, inibala siya, or it could be, according kay ma'am, Ang aton bala ability as a health provider, makasarang kita mag-care for these patients. Okay, you try to put that in your mind. Given that, in our case, that the central role of nurses is our responsibility to play an active role in facilitating and improving access to health care. Kita gita nurses frontliner. But try to take note. Take like uh, a look at this. Like education, kamu nag eskwela, kamu to gain your master's degree. You have also to put emphasis that healthcare is very important. It's not here that you are in school because you want higher pay. Mataas akong rank. No, it must be for your own professional gain. But there's a question in our mind. How can we make sure that we nurses be able to provide a quality health care? So in short, ang ato nga topic, wala ni paligoy-ligoy, we're going to talk about the quality of care that you are giving to our patients. Now, let us try to examine ourselves, all of you, try to examine yourselves. Um, we have so many generations right now. Ano nga mga generations kamo? 
Ano ang inyo attitude in work? Ano ang inyo obligations? And I don't know kung may mga heads diri if they are also experiencing the heartaches those new generations are giving to them. Let us try to review since it was reported 40% or let's say, siguro hindi na, not only 40, but it could be 60 to 70% now. By the year 2020, all the workforce in the field of healthcare will be managed by the millennials. Tanan nga mga heads subong are millennials. Millennials na, do you agree? Sa inyo nga mga setting, in your own setting. Now, I want you to please stand, everyone. Then what I want you, dali lang. If I'm going to post something here on the board, you try to examine yourself whether I amo ko ni bala. If not, then you sit down. If you play that role, remain standing, please. Okay? So, para mag madula to yun yun. Professional nurses, nurses, please stand. <coughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Let us try to examine the different generations who are currently working to improve safety in our workplace. Okay. Are you tech savvy? Yes. You're always handling your cell phone? You cannot sleep without the cell phone? You cannot work without the cell phone? Wow, wala sa minang pungko dok. Wala sa minang pungko, meaning to say regardless of age here or generation, all are tech savvy. All are tech savvy. Let's try another one. All of you desire for this? Yes. You want to go to mall? You want to talk with your friends? Sit down in a coffee table. If you have a family, you should have time for your family. Not all overtime, overtime, overtime. Dako pay ko, but it's no longer balance. Are you doing this? Wow. Ang price ni karong kulang basi tanan. Still, nobody sits down. <laughs> Next. Does any of you want to gain new skills? Why you are employed in one institution? Do you want this? Or ay balan ko naman by ida bala da sila. Are you that's putting that in your mind? Or you are cautious about work that you're not going to get mistakes? Very good. All of you? Because I could see there are different generations here inside the room. Okay. Let me see this one. Are you doing this? Do you collaborate with another department, not only among nurses, like the laboratory, the diagnostic? Kamo ni permi kontra nyo, di ba? Ay, wala di wala di medtech. <laughs> laboratory, diagnostics, cardiopulmo, ano pa ginaiban? Mga pharmacy. Ano pa? Do you do this? Do you talk with one another? Do you communicate? Do you collaborate? Well, uh -huh. So that means we are here good working relationship with one another. Very good. Let's give a big hand to yourself. Let me see. Try ko kunara pagid niya. Are you already on this side? Nearly retiring? <laughs> Pila na lang na bilin. Let me see those who are standing nearly retiring. Wala pa. We have only one. Taga. Si Ma'am Dulen di pa mag-retire. 
<laughs> I include myself, Ma'am Castro, hindi ka pa mag <laughs> So, thank you very much for still you are in the workforce of the nursing profession. Let's give a big hand for those who are nearly retiring. That includes myself. <laughs> now, you see, there says, why I presented this? Because I want your perspective in giving your care, whatever generations you are in right now, it really depends on your attitude. How you give your care to your clients. Do you agree? So, wala na sang generation, the nation subong. Maybe the attitude only that our heads are experiencing is just because of some, maybe siguro, misunderstanding or the nature of approach our heads are doing to them. Right? So, kalma lang kamo mga generation X, Y, millennials, ha? Now, take note that nurses are the key pillar to the promotion of our accessibility to primary health care. So, nurses are the principal provider of health, right? We nurses, 24 hours kita get care, 24-7 get care sa patient. So, sorry, doc, ha? Doctor, just stay there. They just only give the order. They just try to assess, and then they go. But the nurses stay 24-7. So take note of that. This is very important. Nurses are the key pillar for the promotion of access to, to primary health care. So how do we ensure equitable health care? First, we provide equitable care by providing quality care. Wala na sang iban. Kung kutanan ginhatag mo, that is already equitable. Regardless of race, regardless of social and economic status of our clients or patients. So, take note that every patient has the right to good health. Do you agree with that? Okay, so how are we going to provide quality care to our patient? So the first one is improved safety. If you were able to attend our Philippine Nurses National Convention, this is one of the topic, how to improve safety. Because it has already been reported, there's so many cases of fall. Diba? Naka-experience ka mo, nahulog, sa train yung patient. Regardless may bantay o kung wala, once mahulog ang patient, it is the responsibility of the nurse. Hindi mo pag-akigan ang bantay. It is still your responsibility because the patient is still in the hospital. Dako na siya. Na case, ha? especially if there's something wrong with the patient. We have one case happen that the patient is for discharge. So, ano siya? Uh, toddler. Siyempre, natakaan na sa room by waiting for their discharge clearance. Hala, dog mo nga, dog mo sa bed. But all the precautionary measures was uh, done by the nurse. Puro tanan, ara, tanan up ang side rails, may bantay, may yaya ay nag-dive ang patient sa bed. Himbis nga mapauli, what will happen? What do you expect? Of course, still remains in the ward for observation. So we pray, we pray, we pray. Thank God, nothing happened to our client. Okay? So you see, it is still our responsibility. So another one, although mambal ka, Basta the patient is already in the hospital, we call them already patient-centered care. So when we say patient-centered care, all the needs of the patient must be met. Regardless sako ka, regardless understaff ka, you still have to meet the needs of the patient. Kisano yung nahimok sa nurses? 
Ma'am, karoon lang, ma'am, kay balan mo, may obrahon pa ko, ma'am, balikan ka lang ka da. Has taw one hour na, two hours na, nahubsa ng idea, wala kabalik si nurse. Kay si nurse, there's so many things to attend to. So, understaffing, problema sang management. So, manageria, chief nurse nyo, biraho nyo, nyo nga head nurse or the supervisor. If that will be the case. Now, another one, uh, take note that when we provide equitable care, we always have to remember, uh, remember, as I have said, that never look at the patient. You have to provide every, everything regardless of age, regardless the status of the patient. You need to give all those uh, things needed by the patient. So in improving safety, we have to see to it that we have to take measures to make the medical mistakes less frequent and less harmful. It has been published in one journal that medical malpractice is actually one of the, the highest in Asia uh, cause of death right now. But this can be actually prevented, right? So especially we as nurses giving wrong medication to wrong patient or wrong route of um, medication or it could be also that wrong medication to the right patient. So don't tell me, maybe some of you here or most of you here was not able to experience these things. But still, this is one of the things that we need to consider in improving safety in our workplace. Now, try to examine your safety protocol and procedures. You will be guided by this. Now, uh, there are so many things I have experienced with this. Nibla black and white. Nang inyo na, it's written policy in the hospital. If you try to follow those things, pwede magid masalbar ang self mo. Just stick to the policy. Just stick to the protocol. Even though some of your health care in, in your team try to shout at you, bully you, or something, but you just try to stick on your safety protocol, nobody's going to touch you. Okay? But I would like to ask you, supposing it's a protocol, anong inyo pag-admit na some patients? We have the protocol, 18 and below, considered what? Medja. Above or 19 years old already is? Okay, so considered already your adult case na. But what happened if the patient brings along with you a written order from the, from the choice of the parent or the mother, nga mo niya doctor, and that doctor is not a pediatrician. So let's say an adult, so internal medicine or whatever. You are an ER nurse, what you're going to do? In that, you have to decide. I joke lang. What you're going to do? Are you still going to insist that in this hospital, you need to change your attending physician because your attending physician is not a pediatrician? Ethical considerations. Ethics, said I, ethics. So meaning to say you have to accept and let to decide your attending physician whether a refer niya sa pediatrician. Did you get it? So wala na sang away, wala na kumod, wala na iban ha. So this is just for ethical reasons. Although I know it is written black and white in your policy or in your guideline na these things paghambal mo na gani nga 18 and below pet jagi na siya yung kinanglan gani nga pediatrician gani ang ano and then here comes your resident physician or hospitalist will also call another doctor who is also a pediatrician no ethics lang please so sino may sala sa laon niya ang nurse kay pilitch sa nurse nga i-refer ko no please don't do that okay so clear siya it's just an example 
Now, once safety is considered a crucial part of the job, then most likely each member of the team feels compelled to hold each other accountable. Do you agree for that? Kamu tanan. You are hold accountable. Now, healthcare professionals should stay attentive to the procedure protocol. So everything. So tanan na siya, even though if you have some cases nga nag-code blue ka mo, kung what is your protocol, you really have to follow those things. Follow it. Everything. Okay? Then, when the patient is in the hospital, I'm, I'm not so sure, if you agree that they need an extra set of eyes and ears to understand the things. Okay, kids, uh, maybe you have also experienced to be a fox, right? Watcher ka, or it could be nearest kin of the patient. Hindi ka nakapanumdum, what are you going to do, especially if your patient is in critical condition? So you try to give the quality of service, that particular service must be adequate and effective in delivering to your patient. So wala gid siya problema. Maghihom ang imo fox pagkatapos ang tanan if you're going to do that. Now, another way of delivering the health healthcare. So kaina to yaya equitable. Provide safety. Next, the work environment. A nurse could not provide a good work, uh, provide a quality care if she is not in a good working environment. Last, I think, uh, I forgot anong a month, but last month or the other month, we had a seminar in Philippine Nurses Association and we are talking about PPE, right? The positive practice environment. Uh, the only one challenge or issue that I raise is salary. And by the way, right now or yesterday, the Philippine Nurses Association and any other associations, MC Napmanesha or Napmanesha, and SAP Manesha or ADPCN are actually, you please try also to be um, what they call cooperate with that, that they are already marching in Manila or putting a band na in their arm, it's uh, color black, that is that you are actually cooperating or you want to have to raise our salary grade 15. Wala problem, makay Doc Nicolo, damo ni siya yung budget. But what we are trying to uh, say, what about us in the private? Din makuha budget amon nga chief of hospital. Din makuha sina. What are we going to do? But anyway, kung mag-support kita, ma'am, ba si public lang na, ma'am, taas ang Danilas will do. Atun niya, what will happen to us? Amo man di hapon. So I said, this is a call of all nurses. Regardless, you are in a private or in a government hospital. So, pangamuyo lang, at least, but, doon hindi ako sa bata. I do not know, salary grade 15, and but, I do not know. I don't know. Kapag ayo, plangani sila, raise. So, nagdugang puti na ang buhok. So, take note how to improve our work environment. But do you agree? Kung nami ang emo work environment that includes your working relationship, everything is provided to you, you could also deliver a good quality service. Do you agree with that? Then maybe we could say, because of this, then we're going that healthcare is equitable. Another one is to improve the nurse patient interaction. But by the way, Right now, the scenario, this is a research study. One in five nurses leaves the hospital less than a year. I do not know. Those who are in private hospital right now, if you are experiencing that. So in just one month, how many resignees that you have? And you could not 
prevent them from doing that. It is also for their own professional growth, man. So take note of that. The more that we improve the work environment, then nurses feel more satisfied. Right? So baskin gamay sweldo, happy ang environment, good working relationship, okay lang. So sadya-sadya manggihapon, makapangapi manggihapon, makalagaw-lagaw manggihapon. So improve nurse-patient relationship. If the patient is satisfied, then most likely your patient will be compliant to any treatment plan that you give to your patient, right? Pero, not unless mareklamo ang iyong mga pasyente. Pag discharge ko, wala ko yung ginastaksyonan, yung paperma lang po nga mo niya, kung imnon nga bulong, that's it. Nami na siya? Feel that? Is it good? Or mambala yung isa ka pasyente? Nagwa kami, why kami ginambala nga mabalik after one week kay kuha ko ng tahi. So what happens? Te, ano na tabo sa iya? O, di nag na, 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 na mo eh. So mga amusina, those things are typical examples. It is really happening in our setting. Pero paano ta ina siya? Mahimo. Right? So always try. Hindi pala sa students ka mo, not only try that in your fundamentals of nursing, before you do any procedure, what you're going to do? Identify the patient and explain the procedure. So bang wala ah. Nang, ang ano na, insert IV? Oh, ano na, insert ka ng IV. No other explanation to the patient. Ma-follow up IV, sulod ang nurse o mahatag bulong, hatag lang. Mamba na lang bantay, bilin lang da, wala na, wa na. Right? Oh, nga nagduko na ka mo. Are you doing this? <laughs> so most likely, these are things that is already happening. But take note, Effective communication is a clear interaction between the two person. It could be nurse, patient, or it could be your team worker. So nurse to nurse man, nurse to doctor, or whoever. But effective communication must be clear and understood. Okay, another one is you're going to manage the use of your resources effectively and you have to provide operational efficiency and you have to provide operational effectiveness. So, ano na is siya? Now, let me start with the first one. Manage the use of resources. Now, in our hospital, so, kwa naman bala, infectious control. Wala na towel, di ba? So, everything, kada room, may... Alcohol na, or sanitizer. So, kung maghugas ka mukha mo, no need na some towel, but you need a paper towel. So, everything provided by our infectious control nurse ang mask. Kung ano ang klase sa infection, it depends man ang mask ni hatagya sa imo, or whatever PPE that you are needed in, in caring for that particular patient. Iyan na, trabaho sa ICN. So, what Happens, kita mo mga nurses, providean mo boxes of mask in the area, apat, tatlo, lima ka mask ara sa yadlunggan. So kanami, so meaning to say that you are wasting the resources. Not supposed to be, it is just only counted one per person. So except that, if your patient is really kinang langit siya ng infection control, then you have to request already one box para lang git sa patient use, and it must be situated para lang git sa amo nang a patient so that you could throw once you get out, then you get another one. Maputo hospital tana, so wasted is actually doing done by the nurses for convenience and also saves time. Uh, especially also the forms, mo on scratch paper, ang mga form per piece, pila na bili ya, may bili ina siya, but still they are wrapping it onto something or whatever, making mag endorsement on their notes or whatever. So those things, please try to manage the use of your 
resources. It would actually save the company cost. Actually, do ang cry ko para sa private, no? I do not know kung sa government you are provided with all this PPE or the nurses in the government will be the one to buy for themselves. Kung kamu ka bakal daku man sweldo nyo, okay lang na do. Sila pa ba yun sila? They have to protect even the gloves siguro. You are also the one to secure for yourself. Okay. Now, let us try to differentiate, we may say, efficiency and effectiveness. Ano na siya ang efficiency and effectiveness natin? So, ang efficient natin, we say that performing or functioning in the best possible manner. You are efficient. While being an effective is you are uh, adequate not to accomplish a purpose. So you are providing uh, services based on the scientific knowledge to all who could benefit and refraining from providing services to those who likely to benefit. So nami siya kunduhagid, you are effective na, at the same time, you are also efficient. So according to, to some, when we say operational efficiency, uh, this would lessen the, lessen the stressors at the workplace. You provide a positive environment, so better quality care, better services, and most likely less ang waiting time of the patient. So kami may time hours na siya once the patient comes in in the OR, uh, sorry, in the emergency room. So may time na siya a maximum of two hours lang dapat ang stay niya. So or less, dapat na padala na ang patient to the room of choice of the patient or to the ward. So operational effectiveness, there are four components that you should try to remember. But this is more on the management, leading and controlling the quality performance. You have to measure and improve the processes or the flow of process. Then leveraging and automating the processes and continuously improving the performance. So continuous. That, that means that never stop at one. So dapat continuous ba ng inyo in-service training. So wala siya untat. Now, another, the, the last na, the how to deliver a quality of health care, the quality of health care is that you need also to include respect and then promote preventive care. Okay, so kain na to, miyara kita nga provide safety, then providing the quality of care, and then be efficient, and then be effective in providing the care, and don't forget, respect the time. So when we say respect the time of the client, kamo nang ginambal ko, once the patient is in the emergency room, you have to attend, prioritize women for those who need, but we can only do this if we have enough staff to receive the client, right? And then another one is the staff nurses are also on time in coming to work as well as in attending the client. We have one time a case transferred to Western Science Medical Center because it's the choice of the patient Kaiti after nga na appraised na siya, amo ni yung imong balay ng pro, all the necessary things were already given to the client. Pwede na na sa hospital kung wala siya inugbayad. But hindi mo na siya pagpatugayon. Nga tako pag inutang niya sa hospital. So we need to transfer to the government. So ang patient pagdala nila to, wala doc, bulong kuan, wala sang vacant ng stretcher. So they stay there for more than one hour. Wala sang may ma-receive sang patient. It's understandable. Galalawas, right? Western? So, no hambal sang akon niya, nurse. Ma'am, ibilin lang na mo ng stretcher. Ibilin, dahil kay pabayaran ko karong sa'yo mo. Kay once kung nabilin mo, ambot lang kung sapon mo pa, kung mabalik na siya sa'yo mo. So... That is meaning to say, you know, joke man na, pero it's really true, no? You cannot do that. 
So they really have to wait until it was acknowledged na they're going to receive the patient. Wala kami mahimo. So they really have to wait. So the patient also understands those things. Hindi kaka-afford. So what you're going to do? That is why, amo di gani, affordability. So ano ginahambas ang PhilHealth sa inyo? Affordability. But hindi man, okay lang ang government, subsidize sila. But what about the private? Wala. We just only get all those our finances from the patient. So kung wala bayad patient, wala man is well done sa nurses. So I hope the, our nurses also understand. Pero it was already clear to you about universal health care that whether we like it or not, sa private, kinanglan mahatagig kami sina sang uh, 10% malang sang bed occupancy. So you have already than that. So ang ako naging nga lecture subong is, ano ang role sa nurse in giving this um, ensuring that we give uh, equity, no? we are ensuring that we give a quality care, we are ensuring the accessibility and affordability of care. So it is also included and we are already trying to promote preventive care kay para wala na curative tani. So it must be in the community setting amuna ni siya. Then, uh, I already have mentioned to you that the time is very important, reducing the waiting time and the harmful delay actually, it would um, create harm to the patient also. Kung wala mo siya, abi ma-prioritize no, ang pasyente and then what happens, nag lang siya, then it's still also um, on our part, kita man ang manabat sina. Okay. So accessibility to healthcare, there are several reasons that we need to consider also. One is the physical accessibility, information, and the economic accessibility. So take note here that access actually to care is the ability to obtain actually the affordable care and acceptable and effective services of our client. So physical, that means that hapos siya bala, katuan, hindi na sulod loon, maagi ka pa sa ano, kundi in. Uh, that is why ang situation sa ngamon hospital for those na wala pa kakadto dito, uh, catch basin kami sa northern part of Panay. Diri na siya ayon sa mga Saramo, Pototan, no, sa mga Pasi, so, but at times, honey, why kalino, ano, dirak pa samon. For those who could afford, gaagi pa na siya. Pero kung ikaw situated diri sa city, Molo, Mandoriao, do layo na siguro, Oton, Leon, they really don't want to go there. Layo na sa ilang apart. So, most likely, hindi na sila magpakadudra. So, it's one of the things, ang um, physical accessibility of the health services. That is why, and for those nga hindi ma-reach, no, underserved by the government, amo na subong ang ginatawag nila nga nurse deployment nga program wherein nag-house to house sila. Amo nang isa ka-strategy of the government so that we'll be able to reach those things. Kung ang program ta naman sa TV, one of their uh, strategy is, ini naman nga ito mga nurses, makita niya or midwife or the health worker Makinanglan, makita, yagid, nga ang pasyente, siya ginaghata kag siya nagpainom sang bulong sa pasyente because of that. Information, accessibility. What about this one? So, right now, I'm not, um, do wala pa di sa ato, no? But I think they, the DOST said, may ara na kita telehealth. I'm not sure if still going on on telehealth already. Nga kunara ka sa uma, gin ano be ultrasound, in a portable na ultrasound sang midwife, then pwede yung mapadala, even though the doctor is in Manila. So pwede yung ma-view ang ultrasound and what makatag da yun sang diagnosis, kung ano ina siya, so that hindi na pag travel pa ang pasyente, kaya maagi pa sa suba, na muna everything, but immediately pwede niya da yun ma-care. So it was presented to us before last year, I think, by the DOST through the DOH, Department of Health, but I'm not sure if it is already working until now. So it's ready. I hope it's doing that. But in our own hospital, you can view this. 
I mean, ang information technology, accessibility already. Nag-X-ray ang patient at the same time, the physician, if, if he or she is there, makita, yan ang mag-view, yan na da yun, ang, ang film sa patient. Hindi na hulaton nga i-develop pa. Because in the screen of the X-ray machine, ara na na siya. So, ma-wait na lang sa official nga results. So, even mag-insert ka sa, uh, uh, what pa sabi, nag-insert ka sa intratracheal tube, at the same time, you'll be a, or it could be an NGT, masituit mo na nga in place or patent ang imo nga tube. Because at the same time, of course, may bayad, basi mo mangkot ka mo. <laughs> so, if we're going to request for that nga portable machine, but... It is already nga ano gina namon nga we have to see to it pag insert na pag intubate niya may x-ray da yon para see to it nga it's present there. Okay. Economic no wala kita question on economic accessibility because ti mabalaan mo na gadaan poor or rich we have to provide care. That care must be accessible. Hindi kita, hindi kita pwede that you're going to refuse, refuse to give care. Baskin first aid na lang, and then or whatever. So hindi kita pwede. So no question about economic accessibility. Okay, so take note of these things. At times, some nurses naton because of their commitment to their work, so extended ilang work hours. So, kahit ti, may endorsement pa sila, alas stress na, why pa siya katapos, extended na na siya. So, kung may trust ang patient sa imo, sige, siya lang pa inserta, siya lang pa suction na sa akon, then most likely, so, greater patient trust in the nurses as health provider would also give a, sort, a good quality care to our patient. Then, another one, better patient Provider communication. Nurse-patient in siya namin. Nurse-patient communication. So that's very, very important, ang communication. So take note. Access to health services. So everyone who needs services should get them. And not only those who can pay them. Do you agree? nag na tayo, no? But delays in getting the care, it would lead to increase emotional stress on the part of the patient, increase pagid ang complications kay wala siya ma-diagnose promptly, or it could be, it would lead to higher treatment costs. Kaya syempre, antibiotics mo, may ma-increase naman ang imodose. But, what happened? Nga hindi sila ka-access. What are some of the barriers? So one, it could be personal, like, Ay, hindi tada, kay mahal. Why don't have the money? Hindi ko ano yung pakonsulta, kadto ko ano yung sakwak doctor or whoever. May herbal lang ta, kay, waay, kay barato pa siya and you know, whatever. Personal. Financial, then mangutang pa siya o mano. Pero nami ito kay ma'am, kay hambaya, may field health ko no. So, nami galing kiti amo na sa government siya dapat. But now, all, everything is free. We have to take note of that. But less pagihapon because katako isang buhin sa imo. And organizational barriers, especially on the private hospitals. So usually, ang main problem, organizational barrier. So in short, the equity of access to health care, meaning to say there are three things that we're going to pursue. Equal access to available care for equal need, Equal utilization for equal need, equal quality of care to all. So, hindi nang para lang sa mayayaman o could afford the care, but to everyone. So, muna siya. So, I do not know if you still remember during the International Nurses' Day, iyas ang ICN, na remember nyo, this is one of the theme. So I just get this also from one of the journal of the Philippine Journal of Nursing when they celebrated the International Nurses Day closing the gap this is their theme increasing access and equity if you have that journal PGNU naka front page ini siya right nakita niyo do may 
train na brown color. Yeah, nga may mga ano. Now, the main point of this team, actually, they would like to communicate to nurses that they have an essential role in the provision of equitable, accessible health care. Do you agree? So, doka nami, no? So, actually, ganan ini, but at times, do wala na natun, we are no longer doing it by heart. Yeah, we are the one responsible for this. So nurses, they note that nurses are the principal provider of primary health care. So the role of nurses expanded na gani subong has included clinical nursing practices. So anong clinical nursing practices nyo? Dapat may skills ka mo, importante get related to competence. Your ability to support the behavioral changes. Like for example, pasyente mo to nagsinggitan, pag abot mo na mangkot ka malang, ano to ma'am, kabot-buot ka pa, pak, tinampa ka sa pasyente. So what is that? Do you have the skills to approach your patient? So do you have the skills to communicate to your patient? Do you have the skills to respond to your patient's attitudes and beliefs? Nakita mo to abi may mga orasyon orasyon sila sa sulod sang room nila. As a nurse, what you're going to do? Are you competent enough in your clinical practice? Sa wayon mo siya or isugid mo lang siya sa iyong attending physician? Are you going to stop those things? We cannot do that. Ila na iya. Right? Especially mga beliefs or whatever, mga religious, basta religious, kinaiya, mga napamutang nila do, or whatever sa pasyente, never give ka mo magbais sa pasyente. Dako, gina siya nga gamo. Okay? Then, the, another role of nurses is consultation. Kisa ang pasyente or the fox, makonsult pa sa nurse rather than to his or her attending physician because they have already built a trusting relationship. You agree? Is that right now? Or just a mere in your family. Hula tun talang si Hinday kung ano kung pa hospital, panikon ipa konsulta or whatever. Even though ano ka palang, volunteer ka palang, pero you will be the one to decide everything for the family because you are a nurse. Consultation. Another one is follow-up treatment. Right now, nag-emerge na ang wound care nurse. So, dapat kada hospital may wound care nurse na siya. And they are, they are actually the one to follow up the patient already at home, post. And especially, namin na siya kung ang pasyente may mga bed sore, si Lagid ininaga care, hasta ma-discharge ang patient, hasta sa balay sang pasyente if they request the, the wound care nurse will be the one to go there and care for the patient. Okay? The fourth one, patient education. Health education. That's very, very important. Pero mangkot ako, nag-educate ka mo sa nurse, Tani, amun ni Tani, as ang, sa patient nyo gali. Amun ni Tani kayo naging butang ko, no? If you are doing health teachings to your client, ga mo pa ni ka mo? Do wala ko may na... Siguro, for those who are Generation X, mga baby boomers, they are doing this, but I do not know with the new generations right now. Patagbulong, wala na. Gwa na sa room. So this is very important in patient education, your communication skills, how you'll be able to discuss the, the things needed by the patient, how you'll be able to let the patient express ang iyang feelings, how you'll be able to encourage the patient and the family Nga mag participate sila in the decision making no, with regards to the care for the treatment of the patient. Especially mga chronic illnesses na bla, may mga cancer ng inyong patient, and ano, or gina dialyze na siya every three weeks or every week na lang. So kinang langi ni ang patient education. And the last one is nga role is illness prevention. Kaya as much as possible, Ang ginay mo, tabala, cure na siya dayon. Tani kung pwede palang promotive, preventive lang anay. And this would start in the community. Okay, so because of those roles, gonna discuss ko, this has what happened because of those things, kung ginapractice nyo. 
improve ang availability of our healthcare system, na reduce ang symptoms of the different chronic diseases, and na increase ang cost effectiveness and enhance the customer's experience of healthcare system. Kati, pwede na sila kapospital gali, libre, baskin private na, pwede sila gali, kakadto dira. Because 10% of the bed capacity is allotted for the universal health care. So health promotion by nurses can lead to many positive health outcomes. So that includes adherence, includes the quality of uh, life that you are giving to the patient, patient's knowledge of their illness, as well as later on, they're going to do self-management. Now, since... This will be the last two slides, two slides that I have. Please remember your role in ensuring equitable, accessible, and affordable health care. So you have to remember, my fellow nurses, take new and expanded role in health care. We have the new path right now, although I do not know if it's still present. Ara ng telehealth? What about informatics? Tanan ka mo naka-hospital information system na? Wala pa. Ti, pila ka ta, 10 years behind? That's already nga dapat informatics na kita. What about ang PhilHealth siguro? Informatics na na sila. All the records that you're going to submit dapat computerized na. Genetics, genomics, so nurses as a scientist na and as a leader in the society. Take note of this expanded role of the nurses. Not only those things that I have given to you. So let me end my talk by saying, accept your past without regrets. Handle your present with confidence and face your future without fear. Thank you, nurses. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Mrs. Yoro, for that very informative discussion on the role of nurses in uh, ensuring equitable, accessible, and affordable health care for all Filipinos. All right, so just a little background of our next topic, nursing care framework towards achievement of universal health care for all Filipinos. So this framework that uh, our classmate is about to present is actually a course output of the theoretical foundations in nursing, one of the courses in the Masters of Arts in Nursing program. As such, it is a group project among us six members of the class Ms. Jalfem Angeles, Ms. Reza Castro, Ms. Grace Panes, Ms. Dina San Agustin, Ms. Ana Sechirita, Ms. Queenie Sol Sustitiedo, and of course, yours truly. To represent the group, Ms. Grace Panes will further discuss our project. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the representative of MAN 601, Ms. Grace Panes. Please give her a round of applause. Good afternoon. Wala na downward na ang spirit, poor in spirit. Good afternoon, everyone. Sige, count of hands, Anay. Sinong affiliated sa hospital? Para lang mabalaan ko ako niya <laughs> ng audience. And the rest? Hospital man. <laughs> Hospitals. Okay, government hospitals. Nagagamay. Private hospitals. And the rest, sinong affiliated sa public health? Okay, so 70%, roughly 70% of the audience are affiliated with public health. Okay, so, sorry, ano ba yun? Okay, so what I will be presenting actually is quite academic. So please bear with me in the next 45 minutes of I hope I could not finish 45 minutes, but we'll see. Okay. So we call this the nursing care framework towards achievement of universal healthcare for all Filipinos. 
if you might have, uh, if you will see the slides later on, it's kind of a summary of everything that we have been discussing since early morning. So, kung ano ang ginpresent ni Ma'am Yorong nga roles, we summed it up into something that can be workable towards achievement of um, UHC. So, I hope I can meet the following objectives that all of us, after my session, will be able to discuss this framework at the con in the context of universal healthcare. Outline the expected roles. Gin preempt na kagina ni Ma'am Yoro ang roles. But you will see later on that it's gonna be a sort of an umbrella of all the roles that is expected of us as nurses. And lastly, is analyze the framework vis-a-vis -vis nursing practice. How does it apply? In short, how does it apply to nursing education, nursing application, and, i uh, sorry, nursing practice and nursing research? Okay na? Are we on the same trend of thoughts? <laughs> oh, sige. Diin ganili, what ang sa public health? Di na mga public health. Raise your hands. Oh, so, para balaan ko kung diin ko matukso. Amo na siya. Oh. <laughs> All of us know that we have national objectives for health that we follow. Dr. Nicolo presented that earlier. Unless you are not listening to him. Ano ang vision sang Pilipinas by the year 20, 2040? Oh, sige be. Healthiest. Dok Tiny, di ka magsabat, Dok. <laughs> sa ulo ni Dok Tiny. Oh, sige, sa dering aside. Ano ang vision? Ano ang vision sang Pilipinas? Filipinos as, as the Healthiest people in Southeast Asia by 2020 and and Asia by Balanon yun nga nag picture sila sang slides. Okay. So basically, what we wanted really, the entire healthcare system of the Philippines wanted to achieve Filipinos that are healthiest in Southeast Asia by 2022. Kaya taba? Wala ka muga pati sa inyong mga kaugalingon. Ano ba sobong? 2019. That's three years. Kaya ba natin? Sa hospital, kaya ba natin? Nga wala may ma-admit? Except sa manugbata? Feeling mo, Doc? Hindi, gita ko no kaya. So we'll try to see. Okay, so with this, we, um, the, the government devised a law that aims for accessibility and availability of all healthcare services. So Dr. Nicola said it was in the early 1940s, 1900s, 1940s, that UHC was initially developed. However, it took a very long time for it to be realized, primarily of certain limitations in budget, of manpower, a lot of so-called barriers. Pero, ali na kita subong, and we are finally implementing the initial steps of this law. So with that, with that seemingly increase in availability and access to healthcare, is the need for healthcare professionals who are capable of delivering quality healthcare. And we, as nurses, is a part of that healthcare system. Ayaw niyang mag next. Okay. You have been seeing this four objectives since early this morning, primarily because this is the very core of UHC. Nga anag UHC ka. Kay gusto ta, nga may ara kita sa integrated and comprehensive approach with the least financial risk. Ano, ano kung least financial risk? Gamay ang Magasto, gamay ang balayran, gamay ang out-of-the-pocket expenses. If hindi kaya mag-free, least ang pwede nga magwa sa aton. Next is UHC aims to provide a healthcare model in which everybody has access to all types of care regardless of your social status or strata. So you have access to promotive, preventive, rehabilitative, curative, um, palliative, and so on and so forth. No? So, amun ang gusto sang model, amun ang nga ama UHC. 
And over and over again, it's a framework that includes everybody, private sectors, public sectors, all healthcare partners and stakeholders are involved in UHC. And lastly, habakagina ni attorney, people-oriented healthcare service delivery system. Tawo ang core. Kung kita, hindi kita nurse, at some point, we are also clients of our own healthcare system. We are the core of this a universal healthcare. Okay. So for the realization of UHC, Ma'am Jo mentioned earlier that there are integration processes. So we have three integration processes for it to be fully realized. Siyempre, amat-amat lang. Hindi ito siya kaya sa isang bagsakan. So we have technical integration. It's like harmonization of all services. So kung si nanay, makadto siya sa hospital, or makad sa OPD, or makadto siya sa RHU, hindi lang siya paghatagan, ah, paghatagan sa prenatal services. She should be, uh, she should be assessed for risk to exposure sa TB, possibly STI, HIV screening. So ano ang gakadapat na serbisyo sa isa ka nanay, not limited to fetal heart rate, and BP should be given to that mother. That is integration of your technical services. For your managerial integration, that is already medyo managerial and supervisory. No? Synchronized strategies among all public and private health partners, and stakeholders. So, dito na to siya. Kung ma-remember nyo, ginang-aga, may mga ginapanghambal sila nga. Local health systems development. Na, mga highfalutin words na siya for public health. Mga provincial health board. So, that is already managerial integration. We are sitting together, hospital, RHU, our local leaders, even up to sa mga barangay officials nato niya representatives, to, to synchronize our strategies. Dapat, hambal, kag-ina ni Dr. Fernandez, isa lang katono ang aton nga gina sa utan in UHC. And then last is financial integration. This is the biggest um, responsibility of PhilHealth in which they are going to manage fiscal resources in terms of health. So that would include already the incentives, mga pa sweldo, even um, procurement of medicines and your capital outlay. Okay? So these are the three things that we need for UHC to be realized. And these three things are anchored on Dr. <laughs> Nicholas Pillars, gagin present kagina. So, pila gani ka pillars? Ang ah, sumay, sa dumay pyramid to siya bala kagina? Five or four? Five. Diriya? Ang hindi ka sa batsak to wala snacks. Five or four? Four. Five or four? May pagdududa. Ang wala ga sa bat, mas wala pagid sa snacks. Wala certificate, ang wala ga sa bat. Five or four? Five. So there are basically five, no? Five. Amo na nga. Formula one, dati, four. Nga, my plus, meaning lima. So I'll give you the plus later on. So hambal kagina, we have the first is financing. So what we really wanted to do is to secure money for health, secure investments. Next, governance. What will you do without your leaders sa dalong? So we need people, we need um, those nga sa ga ubra policies, policy makers, to support our implementation. We can never do away with governance. Okay, next, service delivery. That is us, that is where we belong, that is the, we are part of this network. Next is regulation. So regulation, kagina, is ensuring that high quality of essential health services are provided to all, to all Filipinos. No? So regulation. And the plus, ang pinakadalom dito, ang dodobulo barko nga nakita, nga ginpakita ni Doc Nicolo, is performance accountability. So this is transparency. Hambal niya, 
it's a sort of a check and balance that usually we adopt in terms of ISO, PGS, those are check and balance system. So it's all yet, it speaks of our transparency. So this is the backbone of the Formula One Plus strategy adopted into UHC through the three integration processes for the universal healthcare to be realized. And we, everybody of us here, be it kung hospital ka man, akadim ka man, or public health setting, we have our respective roles to play. Even if we have different, um, different facilities or different areas affiliated with, at the end of the day, we, have this, we still have the same goal and we still have the same roles to play. Only lang kay lain lang gid ang setting. So ang main lang gid man, nga ang nag-develop kami sa framework, it's because we wanted to ensure that there is quality of care being that it is the core of universal health care. And delivery of quality nursing care is essential to UHC. So quality of care, kung medical man na siya, kung ano man na siya nga klase ng care, Basta quality siya, that is essential to UHC. And us, as nurses, should know how we can efficiently i-add ko na ang efe effective performance of our expected roles for this to work. That's why this framework is presented to you. Like I said, this is quite academic, so <laughs> please bear with me. So we present to you our nurse, uh, a nursing framework that we think can help us find ourselves into this entire system. Where do, where do nurses really fit ourselves? So for now, let's talk about nurses. So client is our core. It's the core of everything. Kung hindi ka mo nurse, kag sa hospital ka mo, kaya na-admit ka mo, kliente ka mo. Kung ma-access ka mo sa FP sa RHU, kliente ka mo. Okay? So we ourselves also become clients. This one, the orange one, is the roles that nurses and clients assume. Nga padala ang clients. That's the reason why there are open things here. I'll explain it to you later. I'll just give a brief overview. And lastly, the last circle is quality healthcare. Because we understand that existing roles with the client can give us quality healthcare. Okay? So before I, ano ba? Ayaw na mag next. Ginasunlog ako. Hala? Okay. So this quality, uh, this nursing framework only has two aims. Our group just wanted to give us, to describe the roles of both the nurses and the clients. Amula na nga mong gusto. Kagkay nagbutang kita sa role, gusto na mong mag-provide sa structure of of nursing care in line with UHC. So we all only have, the framework only has two aims. Okay, um, we, are, uh, we are original, but we are highly influenced by several theories and theorists. I will not discuss it to you. I am not here to discuss theoretical framework of nur uh, in nursing, but I'll just give you an overview that these are some of the theories that has influenced, that have influenced us in the making of this framework. So we understand that humans are rational, we are able to think, you can feel, I can perceive, I can feel, you can perceive as well, and we are open system. So when you say open system, constantly interacting. So bunga pungko ka mo dara, nagalisin ka mo sa akon that is already interaction. Sino natug na one? Kamutanan, ako man. So that is interacting with the environment as well. No? So the inv there, is al there is always constant interaction. And we understand that nursing care practice practices should always be culturally receptive. It's part of the UHC IRR, cognizant of culture, values, and beliefs that is already stated in the IRR. And that we believe that health Next. We believe that there are that people adopt to healthcare practice, practices because hindi nila gusto magmasakit and because they think na kung magkato sila sa doktor maayo sila sa ilang masakit. Basically, those are the two driving factors, and that we have different levels of prevention. That you go to the doctor before you get sick. You go to the doctor during your sickness. 
and you go to the doctor for follow-up after you get sick. So you have your preventive, your curative, and then your rehabilitative. And of course, we wanted to emphasize that nurses and uh, clients interact, but nurses have to do it therapeutically for both of them to understand each other. So those are the theoretical basis of our framework. And with that, I'll just, uh, I'll just operationally define to you the major concepts so that it will be easier for you to understand the framework later on. So the client could be an individual, me, could be Daya, Dua, could be all of us, could be a group. So it could be an individual, a family, a community. Of course, dapat human beings. So, hindi pa man ko veterinary, next time lang ta mag-deal kung animals na. For now, human beings lang, anay. So, human systems capable to think, act, and interact. Okay? So, those are clients. All of us here are clients. If we do not assume the role of nurses, then most likely, we are assuming the role of the client. And then the next are the different roles. Yun. Okay. So motivator is like an umbrella term that caters to all the roles, um, to all the roles engaged by a nurse and the client to promote health and prevent disease. Klaro tada. Do clear man? No. <laughs> gina gina counter check ko lang kamo kay do. Basi naga die down na ang kape. Coffee is still available uh, available at the back. Okay. So, motivator is what we assume para hindi kita magmasakit. So, it's basically health-seeking behavior in simpler terms. According to literatures, a nurse needs to have various competencies to become an effective motivator. So, ang niya, dapat knowledgeable ka. Multidisciplinary knowledge. Next, you have to have skill-related competence to include time management. To include time management and kagina, ability to support behavioral changes of your client. That is a skill. And next, you have competence with respect to attitude. An advocate with a proactive stance, an egalitarian and affirmative attitude. And lastly, personal characteristics. As nurses, we need to be perceived as healthy role models. Oh, gin emphasize ko na kay na hurt ako sa ginabasa ko. Nisin o nag cook ka gina? Uy, wala nag cook. Sino so? Sino nag sino nag sprite? Ay, so okay si Gelia. Sino nag soft drinks? Oh, wala na gid ya. Oy, soft drinks ba laging nahatag sa aton kag ina sang lunch? Wag kayo. Okay? So, niya, if you want to be an effective motivator, you need to be one of the role models for health. And that is uh, what nurses should exude sa aton nga mga kliyente. And as clients, um, clients as motivators is they engage in healthcare practices para hindi sila magmasakit. So, hygiene, for example, uh, um, engaging in hygienic practices is one of the very basic nga gina ubra sang kliyente para hindi siya magbasakit. Okay? So that is a motivator. Next is a facilitator. So when you're a facilitator, you engage in practices for you to get well. Meaning, nagamasakit ka na, gusto mo magmayo. Um, it's part of restoring health. Okay? So kung nurse ka, you do clinical nursing practices to make sure that their clients get well and get discharged. That's a facilitator. If you're a client, you do whatever the nurse tells you to do and the doctor tells you to do para makapulik ka na. That's a facilitator as well. Okay? Okay. Next is resource manager. If you have seen in one of Mam Yoro's slides, she said there that Delivering quality healthcare is equivalent to various things, and one of which is being able to manage care of resources effectively. So if you're a resource manager, of course, technically, you manage your resources. Resources can be in terms of time, fiscal quarta, pwedeng, uh, 
human resource as well, no? project, finances, etc., natural resources. So it involves allocation, efficiently moving and utilization of um, certain resources. So kung nurse ka, kung ikaw, staff nurse, naga gina manage mo imo chimpo. Parang imo 45 nga pasyente, mahatagan mo bulong kag maka-charting ka. ba? Kung ara ka sa RHU, dapat tanan available ang bakuna. Wala dapat stock out so that your clients receive appropriate care. If you're the supervisor, you manage your people nga dapat may ara ka sang staff nga gaduty. Kung may nag-leave, dapat may replacement. So those are our um, simple tasks as resource managers. For the clients, on the client side, you manage your resources, financial research, resources rather, para may pamasahi ka kay makadto ka sa hospital. So that is being a resource manager. And then the last role is a navigator. So it was specifically stated in the IRR that navigation refers to the function of coordinating and directing the individual to obtain healthcare services needed to manage a wide range of health needs. Meaning, we steer our clients towards the right facility or right agency where he or she can access health needs. And the client steers himself towards the right people, the right facility, and the right agency for him or her to access these services. So that is what navigation is all about. So it's basically referral. Referral. No? Okay. But it's not just referral um, for health services. So for example, kung ara ka sa, uh, kung taw atawag, there's a literature that calls it payer space. No? Payer space. It's a space already wherein ang kliyente mo mga ayos siya bulig on how to manage her financial uh, finances. That is still part because PhilHealth is also part of the healthcare system. And navigating the patient to access PhilHealth resources is a navigator role. If you are in the curative space, no, curative na, you are referring your patients to specialists. That is also a navigator role. No? So you navigate the patient para chakto nga tao or chakto nga facility ang iyang katuan. And the last but never the least, sige, sige push natin to. Okay. It's quality healthcare. So according to World Health Organization, it refers to a comprehensive set of safe effectively, timely, efficient, and as always, people-centered healthcare services. So, hambal sa WHO, resilient health services require quality as a foundation. And quality care is needed to be at the center of the country, regional, and global action for universal healthcare to be, uh, for uni uh, universal healthcare to be achieved. Or end to be effective. So if there is no quality in the healthcare that we give, then most likely masigisigila na nga magmasakit ang aton yung mga pasyente, or hindi sila mag ayo. Okay. So we have four assumptions to this. Using gamit to ang mga words kagina, we have made four assumptions. I'll just make it simple. Uh, number one, clients and nurses are human beings. That's it. No, so we are constantly interacting. You are able to think. I am able to think as well. No, so we are human beings. Second, nurses can assume roles. Assume roles either independently or simultaneously to assist the client to attain health. That is our role. Nga abalaga exist kita. Sige, bi makutun ko kamo nga aga exist kamo. So, nursing perspective, ha? Hindi nyo ko paghambalan sa lain nyo perspective. O sila ay nang sabat, nang isabat nyo sa ako. Nga ang exist ang nurses? Ano? Nga aga exist ang nurses? Wala na. Sige. To provide care. Ano pagid? 
to serve humankind. Pero yung kaido ka ganyan, to serve humankind. Okay, so we assume these roles kaya we wanted to provide care and serve humankind. And clients as well, they they may independently or um, simultaneously assume roles para ma-reach man niya nila yung health. Kaya like I said, clients are also human beings. They are rational. So they know that they need to do things because they want to maintain health or restore health. Everybody wants to be healthy. Don't you? Do you want to be healthy? So ipakat na mo ng sito karon sa hapon. Pwede man na, may water man sa likod. Okay? So, everybody wants to be healthy. And clients assume roles to become healthy as well. And lastly, if the nurse and the client takes on these roles, complement each other, make goals together, then definitely quality healthcare would exist. I won't ask Anay kung will you agree. Okay? So, these are the four major assumptions of this framework. And that is explained by the next slide. So this is the framework. Like I said, the client is the core. We have four roles. Kung matingala ka mo, open space siya. Because like I said, nurses can move around here. They can independently assume the role. And they can simultaneously assume the role, depending on the situation. The client has its own open space. Because the client himself can also assume these roles because he is a rational being. So, kaya yung mag-assume sang role. And we understand that if these interact or effectively expressed, then quality healthcare can exist. Okay na. Dung, ano man siya. Hindi pa man ko quite academic. Okay. So, I'll give you a, an a sort of an example. Hindi na siya kitaon, pero of course, our client is the is the core. So our client is a family. Given this household status, a mother, a fa I sorry, a father as the head of the household, a mother who is postpartum and the baby, their baby at one and a half years. Years? Yes, a one and a half years. So they are at least 20, they are at most 20 kilometers away at least, rather, seven kilometers away from the nearest health facility. So this is how the client, the, how our client looks like. Like I said, a client can be an individual, it can be a family, a group of friends, and even a community. So depending on the presentation of these clients to us, no? Okay. So, kay may kliente ka, then we assume different roles. For a nurse, he, she, she kay si nurse Anna Dera, is the primary educator para mag-access si nanay kag si tatay nga pabakunahan ng ilang nga bata. Health education because we wanted na hindi magka-polio ang baby, hindi magka ang bata. So, we act as a health promoter to ensure that the baby is given the right vaccines. Ginobra ni sa ratio. Wala nagasabata mo ni DPs. Ginobra ni sa ratio. Oh, yes ko no. Next, one and one na to prevent disease, will decide, will listen to nurse Ana and decide to access the medicine. Decision making is also a part of being a motivator because you think na kung mag-access ka then you will not get sick or the baby won't get sick. So this is the motivator side. So they can assume uh, both roles together. Next is a facilitator. Ayaw niya na. So given the situation, nga after, after sang bakuna, naghilanat si baby. Very typical. So Nurse Anna, as a facilitator, will give the prescribed paracetamol, for example, or anti anti-fever ng mga medications para magnubo ang iyang uh, temperature and will give the instructions on how to provide nay nay kinlanlan kuan mo sang temperature dapat bago magatag paracetamol ginahata ginakuan anay sang 
temperature. Kung, ga, kung wala na gahila na itong bata, mahatag para sa tamol? Hindi na. Okay. So those are simple things na gina-inform natin. That is still health education, but at the facilitator side already. Because you wanted nga magnubo ang temperature ni baby. And because si nanay, facilitator man, she will do as told. So that mag-decrease ang body temperature sa iyang baby. So that is a facilitator. The next part is the human is the resource manager. So for as a resource manager, nurse Anna will manage the time of her midwives kay para tanan nga kliyente nga magkadto sa RHU mahatagan serbisyo upod na si Juana kagang iya nga baby. And kay kay mangayo si si Juana sang paracetamol dapat may ara siya sang stock sang bulong. Okay? And Juana will have to, util to utilize her own resources in terms of finances para makalabot siya sa RHU. Kag i-utilize, uh, sorry, i-manage niya man iya nga chimpo, kay dapat chimpuhan niya nga makalabot siya sa RHU. So both uh, exist as resource managers. And lastly, as a navigator, Nurse Anna should know when and where to refer if in any case unresolved ang fever. And Juana knows nga sa gabi, kung hindi niya po ma-resolve ang fever niya, for example, hindi na siya magkato sa RHU, then probably the next higher facility could give her the next level of care. Okay, so they can exist both as uh, these areas, but they can also... Ano ba ni? But they can also exist as complementary roles. So paano ba na siya? For example, at the peak sang fever ni Juanita, Juana assumes the role of a resource manager to access health services, whether sa kundiin man na siya nga area. And Nurse Anna, for example, complements this by, assume, uh, by assuming the role of a facilitator to provide the necessary nursing care services. So kung sa hospital siya, then probably admit, get the vital signs, etc., mahook sa IV. Muna. Kung sa RHU, then, then do the uh, very basic assessment. Assessment is still a nursing care service. Okay? And we understand nga kung hindi na siya matabo, for example, ma-decide si Juana mag sa isa ka-sentro para magkua sa services, motivator, Kagpaglabot dito, stuck out ang bulong, meaning wala na effectively manage ni nurse ang iyang nga logistics, maruya si Juana. Maruya atong kliyente, wala sang may matabo nga healthcare service. At the end of the day, quality healthcare service may not be achieved. Kaya wala ka man sang may ginhatong nga bulong. No? So kung magkadto ang kliyente, kag wala doktor, wala nurse, sira ang RHU, wala. Wala kita sa quality service quality health care service nga matabo. So this is the entire essence of this framework. Clear? <laughs> Ginalantaw ko ang ilang nga mga expressions. Okay. Sige ma'am, ayaw niya na. Okay, so how does this apply? So in terms of education, it was specifically stated in the IRR and it was actually reiterated by many of our speakers today that CHED, TESDA, PRC, and DOH shall develop and plan the expansion of existing and new allied and health-related degree, etc., and etc. In short, they want to develop existing competencies for you to deliver roles that may be beyond the usual naton nga gina exist a uh, uh, usual existing usual existing roles no okay so for example for example um it has been mentioned several times about APNs i sorry advanced practice nurses madumduman yo pa ang kapila na nga ginhambal APRNs in other countries, APNs in uh, Advanced Practice Nurses. So theoretically, balanta na kay na-explain na siguro in one of our various lectures ang undergrad, but APNs are existing outside the Philippines. Not in the Philippines, outside the Philippines. But these are highly skilled 
nurses with specific competencies. Nga probably could also be a part of this expansion in the next few years. Okay? So that is for education. For practice, so we hope that this framework could give, uh, could be, could be, uh, could provide us objective points to review performance and give uh, and help us outline expected job descri descriptions and a structure in the performance of our roles as nurses. So as you can see, um, those four roles. My subtasks na siya per role. And maybe for our nursing leaders and some of our nursing supervisors, and maybe not just nursing supervisors, our supervisors can give, uh, can have it as a take-off point kung ano bala dapat ang ginaubra sa isa ka nurse sa iyak facility. And lastly, for research, we are doing a paradigm shift in the healthcare system. We have been constantly doing that. Actually, it's constantly changing. But it's just at this time that the change is very dramatic. Kay do feeling sang tanando ka, 360 degrees siya nga, turn around sa table. But nevertheless, it can be, uh, this framework can help us probably serve, uh, serve as an evaluation point of UHC as a healthcare model, but in the context of nursing care. So maybe it, it, it can be a venue for researchers to see that if Kung ikaw ba nag-exist ka nga nurse as a mo nagagamit nga model, would nursing care be really effective in the context of universal health care? So in summary, wala siya nag-click. In summary, our framework is anchored really on the prin principles on how can nurses help in attaining universal health care. We understand that nurses are also key and team players in this kind of healthcare system. So, dapat may nurses, the same way nga dapat may other healthcare and allied health professionals, because we can't do this alone. So there should be nurses as well. And this framework is influenced by various theories and theorists, which just basically explains nga everybody wants to be healthy. Amo lang gina siya. It all uh, boils down to us with the desire of wanting to maintain our health and well-being. And you know, living at the peak of our existence here on Earth. And last, next slide, is that, okay na, is that the framework discusses these various roles that can be engaged by both nurses and clients. And maybe not even just nurses, pwede gani other healthcare professionals. It's a generic role. But in the context of this uh, framework, nurses and clients para ma-achieve nato ng optimum health and well-being. So there are four roles, your motivator, your facilitator, your resource manager, and your navigator. And lastly, we understand that quality health care can be achieved only if both nurses and clients engage in these roles complement each other and set goals together you know so we can never uh, we can never neglect the fact that our clients are still human beings so they are cap capable to think and decide for themselves so it has to be nga dapat duwa ka mo ang naga set sang goals together hindi pwede na si nurse lang ang ma decide for the patient okay okay na okay so with that I'll just give you, I'll just end, I'll end my presentation with quoting our DOH Secretary, Francisco Duque, in one of his speeches and press releases. He said that let us all move toward UHC, powered by a vibrant community of passionate and committed civil servants. That's us. That's us. I hope that's us. <laughs> People's organizations, our partners, development partners, and the private sector. So, hambaga ni sa UHC, walang iwanan. Dapat ara kita tanan. So, with that, thank you very much and have a great afternoon. Thank you so much, Ma'am Grace, for that very comprehensive presentation on the universal or rather on the 
nursing care framework towards achievement of universal health care. So at this point, we now open the floor for your questions and clarifications on the topics discussed by our three speakers. May I request our moderators, Ms. Reza May and Ms. Dina, to gather the questions from our participants. We have the microphone situated at the center if you wish to read your own questions. If not, we have our moderators to read them for you. May I request our three speakers to please come up the stage for the interactive discussion. Uh, do we have questions? Okay, so our uh, speakers will remain seated in front. Oh, I'm sorry. So do you have questions? Anyone? I'm sure you have a lot or you have some clarifications on the topics discussed by each of our speakers. Okay, while uh, waiting for those who would want to be clarified, uh, you may enjoy your meal. Okay, so we have one question. All right, so our first question goes this way. Uh, this is addressed to Tatlosa. Anybody? All right, so our first question is for Doc Nicolo. What do you think are the implications of universal health care among clinicians or medical doctors? Implications for clinicians? Clinicians, though. No. Okay, as magambaka clinicians, it could be a government doctor or a private doctor practicing. No? So, ang universal health care, kung natawa ni mo ang iyang uh, IRR, all of our questions, all of our discussions are answered by the uh, IRR. So, for us, kung ako bino kay ka private practice man ako, Ang universal health care, advantageous git para sa pasyente. Okay? Uh, mahapos na sa among kay available, available na ang tanan ng mga health services, diagnostics, and everything will be provided by the government. Kung sa government physician naman nga side, syempre mas happy pa kami kay dako na nga mong health share. <laughs> sa dako ang uh, dako nga income, Para sa hospital, kay idagdag na sa PhilHealth ang money sa hospital naton. For us clinicians, siguro, dako man ang impact. Kag, ang problem is that, ang matong ginahamba ko sa inyo, it will take process, it will take time para ma successful ang uh, universal healthcare. For clinicians, siguro, nga, ang ginahamba nga specialist ikaw, uh, cardiologist ka, pulmonologist ka, surgeon ka, IM, endocrinologist, for that matter, universal healthcare would be advantageous to us, uh, clinicians, kay ara na ang tanan nga. Uh, hopefully, ang field health, taaso nilang case rate, <coughs> dugay na nagina pa kayo, for how many years, ara na siya. Once may implemented na, okay. So, Ma at least ang mabawi bawi na belasang hospital man ang gasto para sa pasyente. For us siguro ng clinicians git man, uh, ang mga disadvantage kaya nakita ko dahil sulit HMOs, ang mga ego na tigawa ang mga private na HMOs, no? Kaya ang isulit ang uh, universal healthcare is para gini sa mga maimol. Kung makasarang kimo kato sa private hospitals, no? So Usually, uh, basi why na may makuha sa HMO, everyone will go na lang sa PhilHealth. 
Okay, naman tayo. Okay, that's all. Thank you, Doc. All right, so before I give the next question, uh, can we have some silence, everyone, so that we can hear uh, the speaker? All right, thank you so much. Okay, so uh, the next question is still for Dr. Nicolo. <laughs> All right, so the question goes this way. As the only apex hospital for the five provinces, what are the preparations your hospital are taking in order to prepare for the implementation of UHC? As the only apex hospital for the five provinces, Panay and Guimaras, what are the preparations your hospitals are taking in order to prepare for the implementation of UHC? Okay. Uh, thank you for the question, but it is not only the WBMC and Apex Hospital identified. Benito or the West Visayas State University Medical Center is also identified as an Apex Hospital. So, our preparation now is that as of the moment, since 10 years, probably 15 years of implementation, uh, as I have said now, we are going to a subspecialty hospital para tertiary care na get. And at the same time, may ala kami building, subong ang gina-build. Uh, this is a six-story building, uh, which could uh, probably make increase ng ammonia bed capacity from 425 to 700. Uh, may bill naman ina, which will be effective uh, two years from now. So, ang six-story building naman, phase one pa man lang, uh, phase one will be finished uh, 2021. 20, no? Okay. Ang budget is around 1.4 billion for that. And uh, human resource, of course, by complementation, once approved ng Amon 700, but human resource will be complemented naman. In preparation for that, hopefully, Gitani, nga mo na, as an apex hospital, dapat tertiary case ng ara sa Amon. Hindi na kami sa NSBT, so kalupot, dapat uway na nanda sa Amon. No? Dapat... <laughs> Ara na siya. Ang problem lang it ganyan mention ko naman is that ang city, dapat ang city, dapat may ara sila city hospital ngayon lang. Alang alam mo, taga siyudad, ihaboy mo pa sa district hospital. No? Okay. I don't know, or i-develop nila ilang mga RHUs into a bigger or lying in or what para maka-admit lang sa gara-suka in lupot. Sa preparation siguro, it would take time for us Infrastructure, human resource, services, ginamat-amat naman naman na yung equipment. I think once fully implemented na na, madagdag ng budget, we're ready kay ang likod naman ng region, mahali na na by next year, we have plans for expansion dira ng mga buildings. Our plan is we will be a cancer center, kidney center, heart-lung center, brain center, and eye center. Puro na kami center lang tanan. Okay? And ang kay Ma'am Yuro ginagin hambal, no? uh, ang pneumatic tube. No? Usually, why ko lang ginahambal, get, pero sa medical center, sa mga mayara kami pneumatic tube ginadevelop. One meter na siya yung wide. Kay since damo kami admission, damo kami patay, talang nga patay, dinagagi. Pakanto sa morgue. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Alright, so our next question is for Ma'am Yoro. Okay. Uh, nurses are expected to effectively perform quality nursing. Nurses promote health, but you cannot keep giving to others if you do not give it to yourself first. Nurses are taught to care for others. However, in the process of their caring, nurses often fail to care for themselves. How can the hospital administrators or nurse administrators promote a nurse self-care enabling environment because nurses help what's this has a great impact in delivering accessible quality nursing care that was a very long question do you want me to read it again ma'am all right hello the question answer portion is this a beauty contest <laughs> You joke. <laughs> no, I think I mentioned that when, uh, during my speech that um, in the nurses, ang role ta is always we are. It's the principal nga um, ang pelar gibalas ang healthcare are the nurses. We are the one giving care. But what about the nurses? How would could we provide quality healthcare? One, atong ginanser ko sa inyo. 
we need to provide the positive practice environment. So, atong ina bago sa inyo nga this was one of the topic in the seminar of the Philippine Nurses Association. PPE kalawig na siya eh. because it does not only handle paano mo makier ang patients. Iyan na ni sa manager yah paano natin provide din na sa yah safety man sa nurses. Paano na gakiers sa infectious? If we're not going to provide a safe environment for the nurses, pati siya malatnan. So what will happen? Amo tukin ang balko ba nga dapat protected man ang nurses. Second, it could be ang iyaman nga salary. Ato na yung mention na about already. Di ba happy ka mo, protected mo ka mo if you also be given a salary, a good salary. Ato ba lang ang balko dapat ma-join kita right now may campaign for a salary grade 15. Kaya kay ang balko gani nga um, 24-7 ang nurses nagka-care sa patient. Diba? May nang bago na siya. All throughout the day, wala niya pa huwag. Baskin, ano, hindi nakasiklip ang nurse kay because she has to care kay nobody's going to take care of the patient. Absentanan. Sino ma-care? Pwede ba na na? Possible? Absentanan? Huwag ka nakuha on. So, that is why Uh, we are really promoting the PPE, positive practice environment, because this would one way we protect also the environment of our nurses. We have to take care our nurses. Samo ni priority sa hospital right now. Gina promote ko ginaya human resources. Do kompedi lang, please tagaan yung get priority ang human resource. Para nga kumagnami ang hospital. Okay. Say do ka mo to. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. So the next question is addressed to both Doc Nicolo and Ma'am Yoro. So what do you think are the challenges or changes that nurses and physicians must anticipate or prepare for in the implementation of universal health care? Ladies, What do you think are the changes or challenges that nurses and physicians must anticipate or prepare for in the implementation of universal health care? What's it, Doc? Bala ladies first, get. <laughs> so I think ang nakita ko din ang challenge because ang role yung sa nurses hindi mo na ang question. As I have mentioned, kay one factor, rich man siya or poor sa economic naton, ng accessibility, dapat i-care ta ang patient. But ang isang nakita ko, if among the private hospitals, no, sa nurses nga side, will be the staffing arrangement. So in order to provide, nga parang end point mo, the outcome will be quality of care. So dapat, you also have to provide good number of staff. Pero din kita mangita, sina, where are we now? Kay katakapin pa kadamo, subong, sang opening. I do not know kung ang mga pagiging hambal nila nga maabot ang time or this will be already this year. Ang K-12, na iba nga schools, doesn't have already graduates or BSN. Kay right now, zero bala, wala may nag-apply sa amon bala for ano, na even new graduates. They, we don't have any applicant. Not only in our own hospital. So even other hospitals, wala sila applicant. So amo nang isa nakita ko will be the the staffing. Amo nang staffing. Second, so I hope kung ma-protect naton, protection na naton, ang budget sina diri ang imo nga i-question with regards to the nurses. Kay because the PPE would entails a budget to more budget to the hospital. So I don't know, di na siya kuha o na itong mention ko sa inyo. Sino na siya? Di na siya makuha kung no balance billing ang amunika percent ang yatag mo sa pasyente. So those are the things na nakita ko more on the nursing side. Okay, so gin-flash ko gina sa slide if you can remember may mga challenges dito sa health workers but kung specific din sa doktor ako siguro nga ara ako sa tertiary hospital why ko gawa challenge ang challenge we lang how to develop how to accept these referrals and everything ang challenge ara sa ground sa public health workers 
Damo ni sa inyo NDPs, di ba? Pila ka bilog ang doktor sa inyo MHO or RHU? Isa, dua. Kung isa, may seminarang isa, why bilin? Ha? Nurse bilin. Nurse ka konsulta, midwife ka konsulta, and everything. So kung implement na karoon ang uh, UHC, since all patients maagi anay sa barangay health station sa RHUs, sino ma-navigate? nga ginalantaw naton. Ang challenge is really ara sa doktor sa dalong, ara sa healthcare workers sa dalong. Hindi sa amon sa babaw as Apex Hospital. E kami ya, pag-abot sa amon, screen na na ang mga pasyente nga dapat uh, i-take care na mong tertiary cases and everything. So, ang challenge pag it, ara, since the, all the RHUs, Barangay Health Station, under sa LGU. No? As mentioned na na da, ang kwarta gina manage sa provincial health board. So the governor, the mayor, and everything, they all decide sa dalong. So ang big challenge ara gin sa ila. Sino ay han, mahilagi ko maprobara, no? Makadto sa dito sa putok-putokan ng barangay para mag-ubra. Sa inyo di subong sino ang ina-challenge. Sige, sunduan bigo mo 50 mil as nurse. Kantok mo sa Basilan, tawi-tawi. Ah. Siyempre, parang na displacement na na iya. No? Kung may family ka din displaced, kayo katama. So probably, ang kuhauna nila ang lapit man dito. So the challenge again is sa grassroots, not to us. So ang challenge kaya po, ara sa local government unit, sa LCEs, local chief executives, to improve the RHUs improve the Brangai Health Station. Thank you. All right. The next question uh, is not addressed to any particular speaker, so either Doc Nicolo and Mam Yoro can answer the question. Okay, so since the majority of the workforce are millennials, do you see it as an advantage or disadvantage in the implementation of UHC? <laughs> Doc, either can answer. Why I am laughing? <laughs> right now, problem ako gidman na subong. <laughs> yes. Uh, as I have already mentioned to you, 80 or 70 percent, no? 70 to 80 percent. By the year 2020, Tanan, most of the positions are already occupied by the millennials. Kinta na wanyo mga baby boomers kami. We are already retireable na. Not unless as tag ugud ugud kami guru or mag 70 years old, we doesn't want to leave the, the area. Now, uh, it's a challenge, actually. For me, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Why? Because kung ang may ara nga disadvantage kag may advantage i do not know sinong millennials dire wala heart feelings <laughs> sinong millennials hindi ka mo tenno o sinong millennials ay wala ka mo ano ka mo generation x generation y ah <laughs> uh, you know why I like working with millennials because they are very active and creative. Kada sigid ja tudluan. Kada sigid. Ang mga isaya ka factor actually that I like working with them. And the only disadvantage or my dislike with them is that initial the pras bala sa mga bata mo. Pag hindi ya gusto, hindi ya gusto. Whether Paano mo siya ka-convince as a mother or as the their director or their chief nurse or whatever. Pag once nga hindi siya, in sigida, hindi siya. Okay, so kung ikaw ang head, what you're going to do? Far out? Sila <laughs> baldok, far out na. <laughs> Accept na lang. <laughs> so actually, that's the challenge. But actually, it depends on the manager how to deal with these things. For me, as the millennial, we're going to occupy already the seats by year 2020. Puro nagid mostly 
So, ara mga seniors nila, guru Generation X, Generation Y na, I think it's not a problem because they are well-trained and they are capable of handling the situations. The only thing that your seniors were going to protect you or help you is in the attitude, behavior, and decision-making. And I hope we could still make a process or going through to improve that. Kahit ang tao, kung tigulang, or dako na, hindi mo na ma-change ang iya attitude. I didn't know. Mga small children. Oh! Ha? Gagri ka mo? O hindi? Buot ka mo? Okay, so I think it's not a problem. We have to face that. Whether we like it or not, Millennials will take over already our healthcare system. Okay. Millennials, baby boomers, Generation X, I belong to both or the other set long. For me, bala mo may ara ka apply sa ako ng mga higher position. Nais sa higher position, may tigulang, may mga you know, may mga millennials. Gahambal sila yah ako ni sa ako kung millennials kono why ka stay sa isa ka position, no? Once matak anak ko may satisfied na ako dito sa ako ng service sa ngita na makobra. I don't know if it is true sa mga millennials. Na, lompat-lompat siya sa loob ka, basi na, Dok, hindi ka na magkawa, milinyas na, bayaan niya lang ka na, tatatat, iplastar niya na, dadudugay doon, dula na na siya. Bako, sige lang, itry ta. So, almost all nga mga supervisors, kung sabong mga milinyas man, ang mga gurang-gurang, pang morning shift ka na lang, hindi ka na magpulaw, sakit na balikawang ni mo, ginaisip mo lang kalendaryo for retirement. Abo na, abala. So, mga gaan-gaan na lang ang obra para hindi man sila mag, uh, malasakit doon. Almost all my supervisors, uh, nurse three na sila, mga millennials. No? So, no, okay man padala nila sila. Kay, ang ginahandol man nila, puro man millennials. Kaya ang mga nurses ko na subong laban-laban mga bataon pag inman. Sino ito ka-Western Day? May ito ka-Western Day? Ay, linkiks ka pa rin. Hindi kang award... Ah, sa ER ka. O, kita mo, millennial. O? Ang iya supervisor da, millennial. Ang akong problema nila, minilyon. Okay? So, why? Ako, why? Ako, kapag damo ko gin-interview, kay tanan nga nag-applicants, gagay na sa akong interview ko na personal. Do, chika-chika lang. Kung mga millennials, no, makita ko sa attitude ka daw, okay man, yan naman nga daw, pasabay or what. Isa mo lang yung na-question ko na permis sila in which gakwa lang ko hint kung ano ginaman ang attitude niya sa isa ka sitwasyon. Give a situation kung paano sa mag-solve, dira mong bala kung anong attitude niya sa work. Okay? So, millennials, generation X, it doesn't matter sa akin kung kung ano. Basta ang important yung attitude mo sa work in which makadeliver ka. Kaya gina kita, kami, government employee, why kami sumihimo kundi servisyo. No? Misan po yung yawa ko na, yawa-yawa ko na ba't maservisyo kami gayapon. Okay? So, nakita niyo naman kung anong sitwasyon sa medical center. Ang ER naman, ward na na, hindi na na sa ER. No? Di na ka i-admit, di na ka i-discharge, di na ka mapatay and everything. Hindi ka nakasakak sa babaw. So, kung sino... At doon sa medical center, sabong, are we... Amo nang inabaw, Gina? Are we ready? Ready ba lang kami? Gaya kami ang infrastructure before implementation. No? Kaya... Kaluluhin kami sa ulihin. Kaya kami ang hospital, ang gina-welcome ay slogan, kung sa mga saver may anak, happy to serve, di ba? Sa medical center may anak kami, sa ER, bala niyo na ako. Welcome to Western Visayas Medical Center, your hospital of choice because you have no other choice. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Alright, so our next question is for Ma'am Grace. Can UHC be the initial step for the Philippines to implement and legalize advanced practice nurses? 
sige. So, um, Hamba ko ganigina, Advanced Practice Nurses is not yet available and offered here in the Philippines, but it's a venue for us to expand our skills. So, theoret hindi ba theoretically, by the book, or kung mag-google ka mo, there are like five. You have your uh, clinical, uh, tama ba? clinical nurse specialist, you have your nurse practitioner, your nurse anesthetist, nurse anesthetist, o oh, diba, tongue twister, Nurse, um, critical, in critical uh, nurse, na hala na forget ko na nurse midwife, and atap a four, four ba na yon, no so um, if UHC can be a, an initial step, I think so. Kay like di ba hamba kita na tungo gina there are lack of human resource down below. Hamba gani ni Doc Nicolo problema sa dalum. Duwain mo, doktor, maseminar ang isa 5 days, ang isa 11 days. Wala tao sa may RHU. But with nurses, for example, if APNs can be eventually adopted here in the Philippines, nurses can act as primary care providers because they are given the leeway to diagnose and, event and even cure and prescribe. But do not mistake these nurses as an as a substitute for your medical doctors. Rather, they can serve as an extra workforce, an extra hand, para mabuligan ang mga areas, possibly mabuligan ang mga areas nga wala kita sang access to medical doctor. And siguro, I, if my members can have a say to this, and not to this, our advisor will give us an input on how APNs work. Thank you. I would like to add something. Um, Grace mentioned that APNs are not available in the Philippines yet. That is true because it has not been enacted. In other words, it's, it has not been enacted into a law. So there are questions, you know, some schools of nursing or universities, they are so eager to open up a curriculum for advanced practice nurses. Okay, so there's a curriculum. You graduate nurses with advanced, for, for example, a master's degree in advanced practice nursing. What will they do different? Because there is no, because, because, there, there are no jobs that are open for advanced practice nurses. She also, she also said that it could be, it's in the horizon. The Board of Nursing, the Philippine, the PRC Board of Nursing has been talking about it and they would like to push it. Actually, during the last Congress, it was already uh, in the, um, it was, uh, it has passed the third reading and it was already, it was already um, reviewed by both houses, the Senate and the Congress. And then it went actually to the office of the President, President Aquino, for signature, but it was vetoed. So now it's uh, 18th Congress, we are back to square one. So we are doing this um, education and we're trying to, to put the word out about, out about advanced practice nurses because we think that it's very timely for the implementation of the universal health care. Uh, she said something, you know, it has been said before that we need a lot of primary care providers and there are only few doctors. I think in a population, ideally, one physician, ideally, should take care of only 10,000 people. Is that right, Dr. Nicolo? Okay, at present, at present, I think the ratio is one physician to, the last, the, the last number that I read was 33,000, and then Sapa said 50,000. So, there's not enough doctors. If we will give everybody access to healthcare, because with universal healthcare, every Filipino is included. 
every single one, every Juan, every Juan, every Juan, every Juana, and every Juanita. So the human resources for health could include advanced practice nurses. Actually, this is already being uh, done in other ASEAN countries. Singapore, for example, they have advanced practice nurses. Uh, Thailand, uh, Taiwan, um, among others. So the Philippines is just doing it very slowly, I think. So it's also um, it's all it's also being uh, it's also included in the in the republic in in the bill that's being uh, pushed right now, but it's not there yet. So I hope I hope this will pass during the 18th Congress. So we have three more years to go. So we're just letting the word out how. Are useful these advanced practice nurses. They can be primary care providers. They can do all those. They can navigate, they can assess, they can do proper referrals. Because when you when you look at when you look at this, we need more competencies. These are all be above and beyond what you were trained for in your bachelor's level. Thank you for that, Ma'am Sarla. Okay, so another question is for Dr. Nicolo. <laughs> we are talking about ensuring high quality and affordable health products. This is an issue of efficacy versus affordability. May I ask if DOH is also considering not only the price nor the brand, but the manufacturer in acquiring the drugs to be supplied to the facility? Years back, we complained about the pro about the progress in TB chil sorry TB in children drugs with regard to the rate. So we were ordered to double dose. How about now? Are we assured to have quality drugs in UHC? Pwede ka pas. Well, anyway, uh, regarding drugs. Panaman, pasi malay bela ko di karon. Since my FDA kita, they are supposed to be doing their job in seeing to it that all drugs nga nagasulod sa aton are effective, efficacy, no price per se. Kaling ang kasulod sa aton supong abalay no India, India. India, kag India. Kay barato dito ang product. Personal experience, yes. Uh, when I was in Montfort, ako pag ginakigan sa nanay, sa pasyente. Gasilulitis ang bata. Tikang available na mo, generic. Clindamycin. For three days, tapo naman ko lang kita, after three days of clindamycin, high dose ka. Nasubside na na ang redness. Yeah, for three days, gawursen. Kinabla ko na nanay. Bakal ka to sa Iluilo, bisang amun ni nga brand. Ang dalasin, sige nga brand. After two to three, two days, doon yung pahit lang. So, can I, makambal ako, makakonclude ako nga pigado ang generic compared sa branded. Sapay kay sample, MRM ako. Tagaan sang bulong, pang patulog. Tulog pasyente, paghiwa ko, hulag. Hulag. Ang basang siya, dok, 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 dali lang, i-double dose ta. Therefore, nag-double ang gastos ang pasyente. Instead ng one vial lang, two vials. And that is true, that is happening. Sa medical center, ginhimuan ko na na sa team. May team nga therapeutic committee kami nga team. Studyhan nyo na ang ining nga mga bulong na generic, ang effectivity niya. So, gagather pa lang kami. Sa mukha daw last year ko pa lang gagather. I don't want to pinpoint kung ano ginagawa niya. Uh, generic na siya. But there are many generic kasulod sa mo since beating mo. Tani, i-control gina sa FDA. Marandom testing sila. Ang balo na sa FDA, may nagreklamo na ng damo hospitals nga ini nga brand, uh, Haosyao, uh, Kalawang, ang iya sulod. Ang nung natabo, ginbalikan sila sa supplier. 
sa akusasyon. Libel. Anong proof namon? Don't you know nga kung ipa-examine mo nagilang isang kabulong, you will cost millions of pesos. Magpa-examine lang. Sang iyang molecular level. So, probably, uh, previous years, or, di ba? FDA nagka-controversy. Do you think it's happening? Yes, may insider akong kilala. It's happening. By the nice dalong. Masilo lang ilabulong. So, di ra... <laughs> That is beyond my control na. Dapat iyan na sa mga legislators natin to implement uh, effective nga rules lay nga ang masulod nga bulong sa aton quality medicine. Speaking of quality equipment na naman, sumulod karon China. So kung ikaw magbidding government kita 9184, you should stick sa pinaka lowest. But may arada lowest and responsive. So, di kami permis sa responsive. Bisan lowest ka na, di kami sa responsive. Kaya ang end user, amun ni gusto, amun ni gusto namon, kay na based on experience, ta, 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 ta. bisan lowest ka na, da, iya, may mahal-mahal di rin, pero quality. Sang sa iba na yung made, na na iba China da, or di na nga made nga, after a few weeks, few months, guba na. So, It's judgment in man sa kabudlay kung ara ka sa babaw kung sigihon mo na ang generic or sa branded ka. So, na. so nga mong subong, para hindi kami mabalikan sa supplier, ginaimuan na namon sa report. Studies, nga ining nga bulong, ta -ta -ta -ta, why effect, gina double dose, ta -ta -ta. then pasa na namon sa FDA. We already passed sa FDA siguro last year, dua. Why kami baton reply sa FDA? So, ano obrahon namon? Follow up letter, follow up letter, follow up letter. So, I think it yaboy yeah, inang question sa mga legislators nato kay sila ang may control, no? Sa more effective nga law regarding safety pagpasulod sa bulong para hindi magita paghabuyan diri sa mga lawlaw nga bulong kag mga lawlaw nga equipment. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, Doc. All right, so our next question is addressed to no particular speaker. It goes this way. Uh, universal health care always aim for the benefit of the client. But what about who will take care of those who gives care? Does UHC also address fair and just compensation and standard patient ratios? Actually, um, We have already from the Department of Health ang mga nurse-patient ratio anong approved na ina siya. So we need to follow but what is happening right now tanawan nyo bala, one nurse to 30 patients which is kung i-accredit na sila hindi na sila dapat kapasar. Kay ilang iya mo na sa Department of Health nga 1 is to 12 na 1 is to 10 to 12 ang ratio of the nurse to patients in the ward. But ang private are doing that, but ang wala dahil mo sina is always the government ng hospital. So actually, all the administrators, this is the cry, the problem. Sa ansap na meeting, ginastipulate kag ginaput into what are the issues and concern that we need to actually to develop a program, a strategy, and like that. Siling ko, baskin ano tapaka cry, baskin ano nyo pa na kahambal dito sa ibabaw, but still, manpower is the problem, main problem. But sa private, ang problem mo lang, wala may nag-apply because of the low salary, but we try to see to it and stick to the policy that one is to 10 or one is to 12. Sa among gani, one is to 6 as much as possible kung may nurses. Kaya maghimo na na siya 1 is to 8 na ang ratio ay grabe na mabatian mo ng reklamo from the nurses. Okay, with regards to that for the staffing. Now, sa salary, ang mo pag inang ginakry mo, universal healthcare na kita, but what we cannot do, budget is still the same, the only strategy to healthcare kung approach mo was change. Ang mo lang universal healthcare. So that is why We try to see to it na sa subong at I think it started yesterday, November 8th. In Ablanga marching, I don't know sa social media if you have heard of that, that you need to 
wear a black armband in support of the salary grade 15 among nurses. So during the national convention in Cebu, grabe ang palakpak kay ginahulat namon nga mag-abot dito si Bongo. Kay tirahon gichatanan sa mga nurses. We need to write down tingin na muna. And plus ba nga si sino gading ato na Secretary of Health nga she's the only nurse uh, she's the only nurse uh, he is the only nurse si Tong An si Secretary Tong An kaluluoy siya sang sabat sang tanan nga inquiry of the nurses in Cebu Ti national na siya nga daan so halin sa Mindanao to double Luzon Visayas Mindanao so tanan dugangan pa sang ilo-ilo nga magkahod man kag maisog man then Alulungoy lang siya kasabat kung what will be about that. Tika yung gina, ano nila, per me, are the government na dapat amon yung salary grade. Paano kami kasupport kay Damo nurses are working in the private? So, paano kami na? So, dapat dalun yung gid, not only in the government, but the salary grade 15 will be to all. Hindi lang siya nga, ano. So, that is why amon ang gina, lobby nila right now nga to promote these things. Amo nang hambal nyo, who's gonna take care of the nurses? So, ang isang lang git, uh, in my own point of view, as much as possible, para hindi ma-burn out ang ato nga nurses, amo na siya, ang ako nga manpower, hindi git siya dapat magnubo as much as possible. I am already looking and crying for help to all our supervisors, head nurses, and even the nurses to help augment our staffing. So, mangita, gig kami, nagapainggan nyo kami that, ano, because uh, ang amon nga management are trying to put up nga dapat hindi magnubo ang amon nga right now nga present nga manpower. So, amon na para nga at least makastay sila for a year. Although there are so many who are applying abroad kagatasig subong, wala kami na may mahimo ila na professional growth kay baskin bata kung man nag-apply man sa sagwa so hindi mo na sila ma ano you could not stop their own ambition and goals also in life okay i think doctor uh, yes good afternoon sorry doctor nicolo um <clears throat> We just completed uh, our nursing interview last week for California, and then we hired 60 nurses, six, almost 60. And then last March, the company that I'm connected with, just one day, I have a total of 187 nurses who applied. But last week, I went to a restaurant and I talked to a nurse and she told me, do you know that uh, my friend owns a hospital? The hospital is done, but we cannot open because we don't have nurses. So I was so shocked. Anyway, my question is, um, this morning, I got a text from my friend from Chicago. And uh, did you, uh, my friend told me that uh, the nurses, national nurses, United, which is a union in the U.S., is going international, and they're going here to the Philippines. My question is, how open nurses are here to form union? And what can, you know, like nurse leader Mamioro uh, comment about formation of nurses with unions? Can they? Because it looks like here in... Iloilo, there's no hospital here with a union. And I know nurses are very assertive, and I cannot understand why there's no union here. Thank you. Okay. Bossy, ma'am, nagapang recruit gali dirio. Ma'am, as a nurse leader, we usually don't allow, and I will not allow union. I don't like that. I don't like that. Against kid ko na, ma'am. So, in case that they're going to do that in our hospital, I will not allow that kind of union. Nurses are not supposed to do that. So, um, I will try to refer them, if they have any problem, to Philippine Nurses Association. That particular association that is a voice that's going to lead 
and going to fight for what are the rights that they need to earn. So, sa mga hospital, dali before I know, ilo-ilo doctors, hospital they have, but I am not so sure if until now they have that kind of union. But in my hospital, please lang ma'am, I don't want nobody to influence them. May ari ko din nga daan, subong o, oh, ang dama lang nila kung mag-form sila. <laughs> But then I'm not going to point them out. So nurses, actually, uh, being a staff nurse also before, may nag-create man na sa Amon. Uh, I gained my staff nursing at Iloilo Mission Hospital. But though hindi ang nurses, though hindi interested in that particular union. Why? Because after gaining an experience, one to two years, I am already competent na or skillful. There's so many... Kung baga sa professional advancement, damo ka ma-apply yan. Like atong hambal mo, may nag-apply na siguro sa US, Germany is opening right now. Free ng review sa inyong German language. We have New Zealand, Ireland, Australia, Quebec, etc. There's so many. So many are opening. So that is one of the reasons why nurses are actually doesn't like those things. Unless nurses are really going to stay here in the Philippines for good, then most likely, yeah, they do. They will be become a leader, per se. I'm not so sure, but for me, ha, as a baby boomer, stand. I do not know with the others. That's only my own opinion. Doc, do you have anything to add? I don't get question to Gina regarding Maria Claus, the first question. Uh, who will take care of those who gives care? And does UHC also address the fair and just compensation? Standard patient ratios as well. Uh, standard patient ratios. Okay. Sa compensation, siguro, once ara ka sa government, uh, sa salary per se, mas dako yung sa government. Other benefits, mas dako mas sa government. Oh, next week, may bonus na kami. Diba na? Sa 15. Then, i-release ang abo ng PBB 2017. Oh. Uh, before the year end, my PBB naman 2018. All benefits and everything, ara na tayo. Uh, transfer sa government, ma'am. <laughs> Siguro, as healthcare workers, kay ara gina sa Magna Carta, may hazard pay ka, tanan, feed health share, yes, ara na tanan. Sa subong gani, subong every month may longi. Longevity. Ano, may competition sa five years, tat, tat, tat. So, kung long service ka na sa government, gadako, gadako ang imo longevity niya pay. Sa finance, okay. Why ka wa problema siguro sa government? That's why tamo gusto magsailo sa government. Sa patient ratio, uh, health workers patient, uh, ratio, no? Uh, siguro sa subong, if you can remember, last July, August, nagdengge. Nabalaan, nag-open kami duwak award dito sa Medical Center just for dengue. Nag-add on ako, 60 ka job hires. After sa to, supposed to be for dengue lang. Nga ba ko kung why na dengue, ikaw na, matamato na sila. Di ang nursing karon, ron, kaming ko nila, Dok, dapat amo na yung patient ratio. So, sa subong, uh, hindi yun man namun masatisfy ang ginahambal na nila 1 is to 12 sa critical area, 1 is to 2 or uh, sa ICU pila, 1 is to 1 1 is to 2, 1 is to 3 uh, ang mga 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 ratio hindi may na namun kaya sa subong, may araw magyapong kami ng award isa, dua no? kaya laban sa amun subong job hire compare sa mga regular okay? siguro 70% of our nurses are job hires Ang regular namon 30% lang gina sila. And most of the regular are supervisory na. Hindi sila ang mga nurse, one drug nurse too. No? Nga, no? Supervisory na sila. So, mag-abot na sa isang universal healthcare, we will make sure ay maabot naman plantilya namon for 700 bed. Uh, subong 1,002 ang plantilya namon. Mag-approve ng 700 bed, we will have around 4,000. Kaya ginsulod na namon ang amon nga uh, special, may mga special care areas pa kami mo may ara kami nga pulmo may cardiac, may dialysis, in which why not nadala sa staffing pattern so mahatag ka gina to nurse 
therefore ang ward ni mo mabuhinan gid nag-aara kami sa bong paint clinic di sa paint clinic may duha gid ang regular nga nurse no damo kami sa mga other services gid open in which butangan mo nurse nga na-compromise ang ward nurses namo so that's why gina-compensate lang sa job hours i think uh, we UHC will make sure man nakay ginapapasa kami nga ni subong sang uh, requirements ng mga HRAs namon. Not only nurses, medtech, radtechs, and everything, as na sa admin ng positions, ginpasa na to namon for readiness for the implementation sang 700 bed capacity. I think, uh, silo na ako mo sa Western yung eh, dapat ako. Ma'am Grace, do you have something to add? Sige, madugang ko. In, in the context sang UHC kag DOH, um, if you remember, may ara, sila gina mentions nga National uh, Human Resource nga Master Plan. So, it's, uh, hambal ni Doc, computation na siya kung pila ang expect, ang tani, no, nga, nga kinahanglan sang isa ka hospital. So, what, we're, what we might probably anticipate as nurses in UHC is ang... Um, current nga mga facilities naton ma-level up na sila. So for example, Western as a tertiary is considered is foreseen to be an apex hospital. So kung apex ka, dapat specialty hospital ka. Here in Western Visayas, potential apex hospitals are Western Visayas Medical Center, West West Visayas uh, State University Binito, in short, Binito. Corazon Loxin Monfort and Sanitarium. For them, sila ni ang mga mga poten, mga gina gathrive, gathrive palang maging nga gusto nga maging specialty hospital because wala na na sa DOH hospital in UHC. What they will be termed are uh, is apex hospital na sila, so specialty. Mung specialty hospital that would mean an increased nga tawo to manage special cases. And that could be an opening for many nurses. So, pero ang balidok ni Kolo, 700 bed capacity si Western. Corazon Loxin, I think, is 1,000 bed capacity already. And they are still missing nurses. Wala, kulang pa sila position. So, Sanitarium and Monfort is foreseeing to be... Uh, sanitarium is a skin skin infectious at nga infectious specialty hospital and Monfort is a mother and child specialty hospital so that would mean um, extra areas for nurses to be employed ano karon kung sa private hamba niya the system, the healthcare provider network in UHC context needs contracting Meaning, si government pwede siya kakontract sa private kaya hindi niya ma-provide ang services nga gina-offer sa private. So kung si private level up ang services, may extra nga tao, they can be contracted in that network. So ano kung ara kasi network, bayran ka na ni PhilHealth. Meaning, safeguarded ang imo nga mga ano, mga finances. So maybe that's something that we can look forward to, pero that's something that um, we cannot expect any time soon. It will take time. Pero at least may ara sang future ang mga additional nga uh, ang mga nurses in the field. No, ang isa uh, there will be also deployment sa Japan of um, field personnel that is still stipulated in the IRR, and they would be compensated as they as they should be part na siya yas ang IRR kaya nakastipulate na siya dera. So there is allocation of special funds for that as well. If you remember, there is the special health fund that is a pooling of all the fund sources of the government. Pagkor, sin taxes nyo, uh, DOH grants, uh, even PhilHealth nga budget, and so on and so forth. It's gonna be pulled and dera na da sila tanan mahalin. A portion of that is um, allocated for uh, PS or salary of our healthcare workers. So, kung kumamba ka mo kung it can be an assurance, it's a future that we can look into. But siguro not not yet, uh, not as immediate as now. Okay, so I'm gonna share. All right, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much for those who gave out their questions. And thank you, Doc and Mamiyoro, Mam Grace, for clarifying all those questions given by our audience. 
Okay, so at this juncture, may I request Dean Salex Alibugha? Or if not, uh, we can have Dr. Sarla Dolier and Dr. Charlie D. Baldon to award the Certificate of Appreciation to our speakers. May I request our dear speakers to please come up the stage for the awarding. Okay. All right, so the Certificate of Appreciation reads, Central Philippine University College of Nursing Graduate Program, Master of Arts in Nursing, MAN 601 Theoretical Framework in Nursing presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Joseph Dean L. Nicolo for sharing his time, knowledge, and expertise as a speaker in a seminar entitled Universal Healthcare Framework for Ensuring Equitable, Accessible, and Affordable Healthcare for All Filipinos given this ninth day of November in the year of our Lord 2019. Signed, Sarla F. Dolier, PhD, MN, RN, ANP, BC, Attorney Salex E. Alibugha, MAN, LLM, JD, RN, and Dr. Charlie D. Baldon, MN, RN. The same certificate is given to Ms. Mrs. Carolyn L. Yoro. Can I give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much. All right, so thank you, our dear speakers. So to give us a summary of the important points that have been discussed today, I would like to call on Ms. Anna May Sicherita to give us some points on the topics discussed earlier. Hello. So good afternoon everyone. I know we are all excited to get our certificates, but before that, uh, let me give you a summary of what we have learned from our speakers today. So for session one, Dr. Fernandez explained the role of PhilHealth in ensuring universal health care. So PhilHealth will cover the individual-based health services, so this include the services that access that is access within that are accessed within a health facility so for the population coverage of uhc every filipino is automatically covered and then for the service coverage there is immediate eligibility and access as well as comprehensive outpatient benefit and for the financial coverage there will be zero co-payment, fixed, and transparency of fees. And for our second session, Ma'am De Los Santos explained the role of DOH in UHC. So DOH will cover the population-based services. So this include health promotion and disease prevention. Okay. So for session three, uh, Dean Alibugha discussed the implications and insights about the Republic Act number 11223, an act promulgating universal health care for all Filipinos, prescribing reforms in the healthcare system and appropriating funds therefore. So this act automatically enrolls all Filipino citizens in the National Health Insurance Program and prescribes complementary reforms in health system. So this gives all Filipinos access to the full continuum of health services that they need while protecting them from financial hardship. And for session four, Dr. Nicolo explained the physician standpoint in ensuring equitable, accessible, and affordable health care. So Dr. Nicolo emphasized that the need to ensure efficient and equitable use of health resources, health services, and benefits, prioritizing the agenda. So also to ensure the accessibility of essential quality health care services at appropriate level of care. Okay. And for session five, Ma'am Yoro discussed the nurse's role in ensuring equitable, accessible, and affordable health care. So it was emphasized by Ma'am that how nurses can provide quality health care depends on our attitude. So nurses are the principal provider of health. So as nurses, we provide equitable health care by providing quality care. So quality care can be delivered in various ways such as providing safety, patient-centered care, by providing physical, 
information, economic accessibility, and equity of access to health services. And lastly, Ma'am Grace Panes discussed the nursing care framework towards achievement of universal health care. So, uh, she discussed the four roles of nurses and the clients. These are the motivator, facilitator, resource manager, and navigator. So, both the nurses and the clients engage in these roles to complement each other in order to achieve quality health care. So, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Anna May. So today was indeed a fruitful and engaging day for everyone. We have learned a lot from our esteemed speakers. And now, we have finally reached the end of today's event. To formally end the seminar, I would like to call upon Dr. Sarla F. Dullier, our man professor, to deliver the closing remarks. So congratulations. Congratulations, you are now very knowledgeable on United Health, United Health, Universal Health Care. So when you go out of this building, when you go out of CPU and go home to your, go to your homes and you'll ask your wife, your partner, your children, so what did you learn today? What will you say? Universal Health Care. Okay, this is, this is the challenge that I would like to leave with you. Knowing is not enough. Knowing about universal health care is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. And that's by Gwiti. All right? I would like to call the hard-working students of MAN 601. They did not know that they will be called, so this is a surprise to them. Uh, Risa Castro. <laughs> Jal Firm Comodero. Punta ka doon. Punta ka doon. They did not expect that they will come up the stage. Uh, Jerex. Nika Montecalvo, Dina San Agustin, Dina, Ana May Sitirita, Queenie Sustituedo, So these are, the, these are the students who put this seminar together. And we are so proud of them. And once again, thank you for coming.